You're listening to the New Artist Workshop. What's all this bullshit being for the last 2,000 fucking miles? I call franchise. I'm Peter Mancuso. That was a different intro. Um, well, this movie requires a different tone. <laughs> and I <laughs> am Viviana Metzger, and this is the show where Peter and I pick a film franchise and go through every single installment. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And to be clear, we are defining a franchise as a series of films with at least four entries. So if it's just three entries in a TV show... I don't want to hear about it. So, what are we talking oh about my today? Lord. <laughs> so today we are talking about the 2017 film Logan. No Lo- colon. Logan. <laughs> uh, and just so you know, this is your one and only spoiler warning. In case you want to know and like keep up with what we're talking about, uh, pause, <laughs> and then go watch the movie, and then come back. All right, well, welcome back to our episode. <laughs> uh, so this is, let me do the little letterboxed blurb here to get us started. Give a sense of what the, the, what the story's about, what the film's about. In the near future, a weary Logan, I think that's an accurate descriptor. <laughs> a weary Logan cares for an ailing Professor X, also accurate, in a hideout on the Mexican border. But Logan's attempts to hide from the world and his legacy are upended when a young mutant arrives, pursued by dark forces. Yikes. Um, so, a little bit of basic info about the film. So, it was directed by James Mangold, who, of Woo! course, directed um, Viviana's favorite X-Men film, The Wolverine. Yeah. Um, ri- it was written by Scott Frank, James Mangold, and Michael Green. I have no idea, like, besides James Mangold. But Scott Frank apparently was one of the co-writers of The Wolverine. So, it's kind of like a continuation of the, the Wolverine. Yeah, the Wolverine. The Wolverine, not the one where he's in Japan. The No, the one in Japan is the Wolverine. No, but I thought you said my favorite was... was Is the Wolverine. Oh, over Origins. Okay. You don't it, even okay, know okay, your okay. favorite. Okay, it used to be Origins, and now it's the Wolverine. Why is it Origins? No, that's not true. No, yes, it is. The what are you Origins talking? is like in the middle of your list. No, the ones where... The one... Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyways. Um, it was distributed by 20th Century Fox per usual. Uh, it was released in March of 2017. It had a budget of about $112 million with a box office gross of $619 million. So not gangbusters compared to its budget, but definitely, uh, you know, a pretty good percent return. You know, about like a 450000 a 450% return on investment. <laughs> um, so you had seen this before, right? But with me, right? Like you hadn't, like we watched this about a year yes. ago. You hadn't seen it before then though, right? Yeah, that was my first um, time watching it. I, I mean, I obviously knew about it. I knew people liked it. Um, I was going to say like, did I you knew know about it before? people hands? with like a poster of it in their room. Like, yeah, you know, so... I was very busy that year, so I just didn't get to it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't. It didn't top your priority list to go yeah, see it, Logan. <laughs> it's just like I, I got stuff, you know. Well, in 2017, you oh you could have seen R-rated films. I wasn't sure. <laughs> well, when Deadpool came out, you I think you may have been only seven, sixteen or seventeen. Yeah. I don't know how old you can be. Is it eighteen or seventeen? To you go see, to go by yourself to an R-rated film by yourself. Yeah. I think it's like sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Um. So let's talk a little bit about the background of the. Of what about the, wait? What about you? Oh me, little old me. I used to oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I did. I saw this in theaters when it came out. Mm. Um, I was me and my friends were so hyped for this movie, um, because the trailer was mm-hmm. like one of the best trailers I've ever seen. So <laughs> if for those of you who have seen it, it's so it's set to 
uh, Johnny Cash's version of Hurt mm-hmm. by Nine Inch Nails, like the you know like, you know the classic Johnny Cash song. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And like especially like I think a trailer oftentimes films don't live up to their trailers, mm-hmm. and I think the reason why is because a trailer is able to capture the aesthetic of the film. Yeah. Which can be very alluring because, like, we're not, like, judging on a script level or story level. Like, you can really just appreciate it, like, through, like, these series of images, right? Yeah. yeah. So, the aesthetic of this film was, like, nothing that we had ever really seen before, especially from this franchise. Yeah, very stripped down. Very stripped down, very realistic. And that paired with the Johnny Cash song was just, like... Uh, we were high, especially because I was like a sophomore. We were like sophomores in film school. Yeah. So yeah. we were like, this is going to be so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a real movie. Like we grew up watching these movies. <laughs> like, so it was like the, it was like the perfect time. Yeah. Um, you know, and it came out. Yeah. I was a sophomore in college. Um, so I did see it in theaters. Really, really liked it. I don't think it really lived up to the hype that at least me and my friends had felt, but I think I definitely really liked it. Um, and I've seen it like a couple times since then. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, yeah. so now let's talk about the background. <laughs> um, so in 2013, uh, which is when the last Wolverine movie titled the Wolverine came out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, around that time there was, um, talks began for another standalone Wolverine movie, um, with James Mangold involved in some capacity. Mm. Um, Hugh Jackman who has been, like, increasingly more involved with the development of the stories. Like, you know, uh, he was involved with X-Men Origins Wolverine in terms of developing developing that, but obviously that didn't turn out super well. So he was even more involved with the Wolverine. But at this point, he was very involved, like him and Mangold working together to kind of craft the story. Um, The the, the idea of what they were trying to go for were... um, being less like superhero films, especially superhero films of the time, mm-hmm. um, and being more similar to films like The Wrestler and Unforgiven. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know, I actually have never seen either of these films. No. The, the Wrestler is a film by Darren Aronofsky about like an aging wrestler or who's like past his prime. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Unforgiven is about an aging cowboy assassin who, you know, is past his prime. <laughs> um, so you're trying to see. So basically. He makes movies about old dudes. Who? Oh, what these aren't mean? by James Mangold. Oh, well, the the first one was Darren Aronofsky. He, he likes movies about old guys. I suppose, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so essentially, this idea of like, what if we get to see Logan like basically at the end of his journey? Like, what would that be like? Um, even before the story was finalized, they felt that this film would be sort of a finale for the character. So like, they went into it very much with it in mind that this is going to be like. Until, like, Marvel, like, the MCU reboots it. Because this is before Disney buys Fox. Yes, yes. Right? But um, they kind of went into it knowing that this would be, like, a, the finale for this version of the character. The Hugh Jackman version of the character. Yeah. Um, it's loosely based on the Old Man Logan storyline from mm-hmm. the comics. Um, which is essentially nothing like this. Oh. Um, the only thing that they really have in common is this idea of, like... Old Man Logan, um, <laughs> in some kind of like pseudo Western setting, um, that storyline is arguably would not fit the tone of this because this is meant to be like very serious, or not mm. even that it's serious, but it's meant to be like very very realistic. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas the comic is very comic booky. Mm. So just very briefly, the storyline of the, from the Old Man Lo- Logan storyline is that the supervillains have defeated the heroes. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing that we often forget, because I think for a lot of people, Marvel is very much defined by the movies now. Yeah. So we very much think of the MCU segmented from, like, the Fox X-Men stuff. Yeah. Whereas in the comics, it's all... They're not separated. Like it's that. all jumbled. Right? So in this universe, the supervillains have defeated the heroes, and... You know, all the villains have, like, divided up America amongst themselves. Like, (laughs) I I could be (laughs) misremembering some of the villains, but, like, Doctor Doom is involved, Magneto, the Red Skull. The Red Skull specifically has named himself President of the United States. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And there's lots of crossovers with other Marvel characters. Um, You know, like, at one point... um, 
I think there's like a gang of like descendants of the Hulk. Oh. But like, but like, you know, if my if my memory is correct from doing this research, the Hulk and his cousin She Hulk had <laughs> kids together. Wait, I thought they were. I thought they were a couple. They're cousins. I think they're cousins. Yeah. Because uh, She Hulk is not Liv Tyler. No, I know. I just always, I just always thought the counterpart of 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 heroes were like their no like because supergirl is like clark kent's cousin oh okay uh back girl is commissioner gordon's daughter yeah and i think in some versions they have batman and and her like hook up but i think mostly it's like a father like kind of like a mentor figure Uh, okay um so so no not really (laughs) (laughs) not not quite okay well, never mind. Um, but a lot of it happens. A lot of stuff that happens in the storyline is very much like seeped in like Marvel lore. Yeah. So like he does this whole cross country thing. I, I forget like what the premise is, but he ends up eventually like defeating Red Skull, who has like Iron Man's old suit uh, like on display in the White House. Oh. So in order to escape, Logan like puts on the suit and like blasts out. Like what? it's a very Marvely story. Let's get that movie. Honestly, it would be pretty awesome to at least. <laughs> I would love to see that. At the very least, as, like, a one-off, like, animated film. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Because DC does a lot of, like, adult-oriented animated films based off of, like, famous comic book runs. Mm -hmm. So it would be kind of cool to see this story, like, in, like, animated form, I feel like. Unless they really want to do this in, like, the MCU. I don't know. I think they've already done, since they've already done Logan, it would kind of feel like. But again, it's really, like, the storylines are very different. Uh, well, it could it could happen before Logan, obviously, because he. We would be like a different timeline. Day. It could be like a completely different timeline. Oh yeah, I guess so. You know what I mean? Type because two. it wouldn't make sense it'd be before Logan, because you think that would come up <laughs> at some point. Like <laughs> you just killed the president of the United States, Red yeah. Skull. Yeah. Um. um what's should, up? How should we address him, Mister Skull, or or is that? Does he have a Mister Skull? Is my father's name. Please call me Red. <laughs> well, he's not in this movie, so <laughs> we're never we don't have to talk about him again. Name? Well, I'm sure he has a name. I just, that sounds like his villain name. Oh, man. That's his made up name. Oh, oh. Well, are you allowed? That would be forging your resume, wouldn't it? Putting a fit, a false name on, on. I guess. To be president? But I don't think he was a duly elected. I think he, I think he, I think it's more he of a signature. I think he, I think he, um, notice I said, quote, he has named himself. Okay. So he's just like. Like a Run, running around in the streets, like I am president. This is so and people throw unrelevant. eggs at him. Okay, <laughs> people throw what eggs at him? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, on track. Anyway, so let's talk about the movie. Let's let's get into the gritty details. Let me go through literally scene by scene, as I always do. Okay. Apparently, I've been criticized. <laughs> For, for only it was the last one. And the reason why is because there was nothing else to talk about. Because <laughs> it like, was so boring. Okay? Like they don't want to listen to the movie. They're going to watch the movie and then right. listen to the to, commentary. To, to be fair, I skipped a lot in X-Men Apocalypse. I think at one point I was like, okay, so 30 minutes of action happens and then... Oh, well, yeah, because not much really happens. Anyways. Um, okay, so the, the, the big thing about this movie is whether it is or it is not... The perception that it wants to have mm-hmm. is that X Men movies, sure. But then this is a film. Like this is very much like trying to be like a serious, um, and not serious in terms of tone necessarily, but serious like, um, like being artistically respected, mm-hmm. right? This is this is not like for children, no. Like no. and and not just and, but not just because of the violence. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, actually, I found this quote doing some research from James Mangold, which I would like to read oh, now, sure, if I may. Sure, yeah. Which I thought was very interesting. Um, in regards to, like, the R rating, mm-hmm. um, which they very much, like, it's very strategic, like, this first scene that they have. Like, literally the first thing Logan says is fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. And, like, he, like, the violence is, like, I've never even seen violence like this. And I don't know if it's, like, just, like, the uncanny, like, seeing Hugh Jackman do this because it'd be like watching like like Darth Vader like like I don't know like just something like really like R-rated level like you yeah. know what I mean 
Um, but it's like it's very effective. I feel like the very first thing we see is like this very violent do you think encounter the, with a bunch of chulos. Do you think the kids were allowed to go to the premiere or watch the movie that they were in? Probably the premiere. I don't the, think it's like a sorry, you can't come in. No, that's always my thought with like kids and in, in like very violent or like adult. I don't know that's themed a, movies. You know, like. I mean, I, I mean, there's no way for me to find an answer, but I'm sure, I'm sure if their parents let them be in the movie, they were allowed to go see it. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're At not, least to the screen. They're not like other parents. They're like cool parents. They're probably like psycho parents. <laughs> <laughs> like stage parents, they're you know like, what I mean? I want my child to be a star! Yeah, exactly. Um. Oh, okay, yeah, so here's the quote from James Mingle in reference to the R rating. Yeah. Um. He, he said that it was like important it was important for them to have the R rating, not so much for the violent content, but for style. So here's the quote. Hmm. For me, what was most interesting in getting the studio to okay an R rating was something entirely different. They suddenly let go of the expectation that this film is going to play for children. And when they let go of that, you're free in a myriad of ways. The scenes can be longer, ideas can be explored in dialogue or otherwise can be more sophisticated, storytelling mm. pace can be more poetic and less built like an attention span deficit theater. Hmm. Right, so for him, the R rating was more of an avenue for, like, it didn't have to be, like, again, not to knock it again, but, like, the MCU, where it has to kind of be for the common denominator. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very simple, mm -hmm. you know, not to offend any MCU stands out there. Whereas this, like, by by nature of it having the R rating, it can be a little more artistically yeah. complicated. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so I think that is, but there is, of course, a lot of cursing and violence <laughs> yeah. that comes along with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, right off at the start. And something else that we get right at the start is, um, Logan's really showing his age. Like, I think the scene does a lot to set up the, I think it's a really great first scene mm -hmm. of a movie, um, because it sets the tone with the violence, but also like his hair is like graying. He's very disheveled. Yeah. One claw literally doesn't come out <laughs> all the way. Yeah. Um, so we're really starting to see like the toll that you know at this point he's lived like almost 200 years yeah because right? when from like 18 he was probably born in oh, like 1830s 18, yeah yeah so this is like 2029 so he's oh. coming up on 200 years at this point yeah i mean it was a good run you know i would say no he's uh, well it was all everyone he loves died <laughs> sometimes it was his fault uh, his amne he had amnesia so he doesn't remember like more than half of it uh, I would not say it was a uh, good yeah. run. Well, I just mean like <laughs> he's got a lot of time, you know, a lot more than we do, I guess. To mm -hmm. it, you know, if he fucked up his time, his two hundred years, that's on him. Yeah. Well, that's like another interesting thing about Logan as a character is like they really explored in this movie something that is just so interesting about I guess what you would call immortal characters. Yeah. Where it's like they they like yearn for death. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like immortality Always. is not um all it's cracked up to be. Yeah. Like, even though I think it's implied, like, he's not really immortal. Like, he's slowly dying anyway, just taking a longer time. Yeah, yeah. But just the idea of, like, being able to live for such a long amount of time. Yeah. Like, you, like, all joking aside, like, even if he wasn't, like, involved with villains and stuff, like, if you're just a normal dude, you would see everyone that you ever loved die. Yeah, because so it could be even, very emotionally draining. Even his romantic counterparts were they didn't have the regenerative properties that he did. So theoretically, like Jane and oh, what was her name? Katrina. Jean, you mean? Jean and yeah. and what's her name? Katrina. Oh, the his first love. Yeah. Oh, I don't even remember. Well, anyways, yeah. like they would only live for like so long. You know, yeah. they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They would just live a normal human. Even span though they of a life. were mutants, you know. Yeah, because yeah. not every just because you're mutant doesn't mean you're you are impervious to aging or, or heal. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's that's Wolverine's specific power is the healing factor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, another thing I, I think like, that's what keeps him young. You, yeah, precisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. And that's like the whole reason why like he's able to have his claws and everything. And, mm -hmm. um, but it's also the animantium that's poisoning him. Yikes. Which is, so it begs the question, if he never got the animantium claws, would he live forever? Hmm. Is it just the animantium? Or is it the idea that like, you're not gonna, you're gonna live a really long time, but still not forever. Like you might live like 500 years. Yeah, may maybe that one. You know like what I mean? 500, yeah. Um, Another thing I like about this scene, this opening scene, there's like just so much to unpack. Oh my gosh, the one scene. <laughs> I well, there's he's, a lot he's to talk just about. chopping up a bunch of gangsters. Well, 
that's um no there's more <laughs> <laughs> there's more to it um well, something else i like and this is true throughout the film is i really like the music of this film mm -hmm. like for the first time i like i've seen this film a couple times this is the first time i really appreciated the score which i think is uh strong in its own right but also this like opening scene specifically mm. is like i think after he like kills all the guys and goes off yeah. like it's basically scored with like this very soft piano music it's very intimate mm -hmm. and that's what i'm saying is like going off of what james mangold had said like you're allowed to have like a bit more intimacy and like moments for a bit more like i guess what he called poetic storytelling mm -hmm. or the or the pace can be more poetic i don't really know quite what he means but like it's like, like I can't like describe you, it, but I know can, when I see it. You can it. pause to like examine something, yeah. Like really, really sit with a feeling or yeah. an idea. Like that's why kids don't like, or generally don't like, like black and white movies because this, like, the cuts aren't as frequent, and it's in black and white. It's like yeah. you know, it, it's different. Yeah, it's why, it's why a lot of kids like would probably be bored with some movies like we would consider the greatest movies ever made. Like, like, yeah. just like would a kid like The Godfather? Yeah, like maybe or the like, fight, the like battle scenes, Forrest but like Gump or something, or like you know, like just longer things like that. But they tell like a very impactful story. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me, I feel like that's where that's where I'm gonna get very film bro here. But I feel like it's it's stuff right. like that that it's not like I haven't been already. <laughs> but I'm saying I'm gonna say something very pretentious. Sure, it's it's moments like that where where cinema comes alive. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's that's very pretentious. Yes. But but what I mean by that is like that is where the hu like ultimately film is an empathy machine mm -hmm. and it's moments like that that really help draw you in and yeah. help us understand and contextualize a character's <laughs> emotional journey yeah so like even the x-men films that i really like don't necessarily always have the moments you have in here like oftentimes like not scored like just like moments where it's like you know there's some scenes later on that we'll talk about where it's just like really uh, authentic and organic yeah. naturalistic i think that's mm -hmm. the word is that it's not about being realistic mm -hmm. it's about being naturalistic yeah the it, idea it, that it's, it's like it's like it, for this world that they've created which is still very science fictiony which we'll talk about yeah it's it's believable within its own logic mm -hmm. you know yeah and it it i think at that point kind of transcends being purely for entertainment and more of like a like a visual book or like, you know, some, something of that nature, like a real it, an art a, form. It's, it's, a, it's a real, yeah. A real art form in order to like tell a story as opposed to like, mm -hmm. you know, just something to keep, just to your, watch, to yeah. keep your attention, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, and spoiler alert, I, I'm still, not, I'm still undecided while there is one X-Men film that I may still like more than this, mm -hmm. this one, at least I would still argue this Logan is, is more, uh, artistic. It's mm -hmm. like a film. Whereas mm -hmm. the one that I would consider better is like a movie. So, a really great movie, mm -hmm. but it's still like a movie. You know, it's, it's aims are different. Both super, like, there's uh, the Peanuts, like the comic strip. <laughs> what? No, yeah. no, no, hear, hear me out. The Peanuts and something like Watchmen are mm -hmm. both in the same medium, mm -hmm. but have completely different aims. Do you know what I mean? So like, I'll just put X two is I think still my favorite X Men movie, mm -hmm. but its aims, its goals are just completely different than the go aims and goals of this movie. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, so uh, we see him. Uh, he has very veiny muscles again. <laughs> I, I researched. He, he still yeah. he did his he did his stupid dehydration thing again. Oh no! He did, but it worried. He's just like I just want to look as cut as possible. But as an old man, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I think it would be kind of funny to see him like a little overweight or something. Like <laughs> she's at least not as ripped. Just kind of you know smooth. Yeah, he's just. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if women like that, but like the veiny like, muscles like just are weird to look at. I don't, like, like it's just the, too much. In the Wolverine, that was like that i couldn't believe that was real life like that his bicep that was, was like crazy. like even <laughs> like i've seen like bodybuilders and like arnold schwarzenegger in his prime and like everything but like that that was n another level like <laughs> yeah they were like sitting on top of his skin they, they were not in it his was look, body it, was look, it looked like his muscles they, the veins kind of looked like someone like it was like a special effect makeup yeah, like it was like, like 
like a prosthetic. <laughs> yeah. But I know oh, they man. were real. Um. But yeah, th- this one was funny because like he kind of like poops out the bullets like. Mm. Well, that, that, that's exactly what I was about to bring up. Is like, well, it's very real. Yeah. Where, where it's like, it usually in the movies, like you just see it like we we just see him get like brutalized. Yeah. And then he just heals. Whereas like now we have to see like he's gonna live, but he really has to like. Like, like, we see it. Like, we don't get to cut out that part. Yeah, Like, yeah. we're gonna watch <laughs> the bullets really come out of his chest and, like, plop out into the sink. Yeah, usually it just, like, either deflects or it might go in. But, like, because it's so it was so much faster, it didn't look as funny. But, like, here it's, like, boop. Like, yeah, because they do do that in X2 when he gets shot in the head. Yeah. And the bullet falls out, but it's more like, like, the music swells. Yeah, and it's like yeah. It's also not as gruesome. <laughs> No, like, he's just pooping out bullets. Yeah. Um, do you have to say he's pooping out bullets? <laughs> it's clearly coming out of his torso. I know. <laughs> he it's, didn't swallow them. It's coming out of his skin, but it looks like it's pooping because, you know, like... when you uh, go, go on, please. Tell us. Sometimes, sometimes when you poop, it doesn't come out fast, you know? So it's just like... <laughs> That's what the bullet was doing. <laughs> So he's so he's so he's he's this limo driver, I guess. I guess it's like a like Uber, but for limo. Like I don't know yeah, I if that's he, a thing in real life. That should be a thing in real life if it's not already. But I guess it's supposed to be part of this near future. Yeah, I, I yeah I feel like limos are usually with like an agency. Yeah, but um, I thought that was kind of a I mean, neat you detail. could get like you could get like a escalator or esca- escalator <laughs> escalate. <laughs> <laughs> You can escalator. get like an escalator, you know, or whatever. And Uber like black, uh, yeah, like the, Uber the luxury. X or black or whatever it is, and um, yeah, you can get like a nice car. You get like mm-hmm. a little little uh, Infinity or Tes- yeah. Tesla or something to pick you up. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure someone who bought a Tesla would need to. <laughs> but, anyway, but you know, they yeah, it's usually normal cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, strange. Anywho. So he's driving these limos around and he's at this funeral <laughs> off to the side drink. Like imagine if you uh, hired a limo for like your dad's funeral and you look over, you see your limo driver standing in the rain drinking. <laughs> was he drinking? I thought he was smoking. No, no he was drinking. Oh. He was drinking. <laughs> and, and this is when he gets introduced to Gabriella. Gab- Gabriella. Yeah, who's like, you have to help us. And he's like, no. He's like, oh, look at you. He's very grumpy. Yeah. We don't know why yet. We just assume he's just old and, and grumpy. He's always been grumpy. He's always, he's always been grumpy. But but this is like a new level. <laughs> yeah. This is like, he looked, compared to, you know, this makes his older appearances look like he was like a, like a care bear compared to now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like he doesn't even want to interact with humans. Whereas beforehand, he would like tolerate it, but. Now he's so like, grumpy, yeah. Like, so he uh, he goes to the hospital and he's getting um, he's like basically getting pills from like one of the orderlies there, yeah. uh, and this is when he gets intercepted by uh, Pierce. Oh, is that his name? name? Yeah, the guy with the metal the, the robot they, hand. I don't think they ever say that. They might like offhand. Or I have may- to look. Maybe it it's up, like honestly. on the business card, but like I could I couldn't read that shit. I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm like Logan. I need the glasses. <laughs> Oh, so can we talk about how cute he looks with those glasses? He looks really cute with those glasses. And then, I think he looks real. I think this is like the best <laughs> Hugh Jackman has ever looked. Um, yeah. Personally, <laughs> um, like I think he, the hair and the beard looks very full. Like it looks very full and yeah. like not yeah. patchy. Yeah, he he looks good with the pepper and uh, the little glasses. Yeah, the little pepper and the little oh. grass, the little glasses. So cute. Um, but anyway, so this guy's like, hey, you're Wolverine. That's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I'm looking for Gabriella. Have you seen her? She has something of mine. And Logan's like, get the fuck out of my car. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little, I will say, one of my, one of my, I, I have some complaints with this movie. What? What? Um, some of them are, are, are nitpicks. Some of them are not, but this is a nitpick. What? He's a little one note, I think, throughout a lot of the movie. Um, I, I think the, the scenes where he gets to show a little more emotional vulnerability are the best parts. Yeah. Um, where, whereas, it, like, the, the first 
10 minutes of the movie is just him going like, no, fuck off. No, rah, 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 rah. You know what I mean? Uh, so well, anyway, he, is how he, is, you know? he kicks out, he <laughs> kicks out uh, the guy, but he gives him his, his business card and the business card says alkali transigen. Shit. What do we know alkali from? Alkali Lake. Alkali Lake. The but, place uh, where but, he got his clothes. Yes. Wait, but I thought it was a different place. On the business, on uh, remember we saw. It I think it's. I think it's supposed to be like a subsidiary of. Oh, oh okay. Of Al- okay. I think it's just supposed to be like because Al- like because this saw, was like from the seventies. Yeah, I'm saying like it now was, it's uh, like uh, what the what was that the credit scene? Is that what it's called? Oh yeah, Essex Corp. I, Essex, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Because hmm. I remember not. I I honestly don't know. This is the X Men franchise. They were gonna do something and then they did. And then they decided not to. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I like I like. This near future, because, like, it, it's not the same as the world that we know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there are things that are different about it culturally. Um, Like, for example, tigers are extinct, <laughs> is heavily implied. Later on, there's, like, automated trucks. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, there's, like, a couple. Of, like, there's Uber for limos. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. just, like, lots of little details like that. Oh, like, the um, the super corn. Uh, like, <laughs> well, that's real. <laughs> no, no, but I know, but, but, um, I don't know. I just, I, I really liked it. It's not, this isn't a complaint. It's just like, I liked, like, I love near future fiction. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like close enough where it's like, mm, like how does like, maybe this could be our future. Yeah. So I wish it was almost like a little more explored. Whereas like, I feel like it could have just been today. Like it didn't have to be the near future. Yeah. Well, actually that's a good point. Cause I never really thought about that before, but like, it's, uh, future movie i guess quote unquote but it's not like like sci-fi yeah it's not like sci-fi or it's not like you know um i don't know poking fun at today like like with back to the future it's like it's like very real things that will probably happen you know like we we already have self-driving cars so you know like automated shipping i mean it's probably next yeah yeah like it's not and yet because this came out in 2017 but bluetooth headphones existed (laughs) but this is like before i i uh, excuse me airpods oh yeah (laughs) so like they hadn't become like as ubiquitous yet so like so yeah so the kid has wired headphones (laughs) well they to be fair they also like probably they still have wired headphones now it's just like well yes but also to be fair like they live out in the middle of nowhere like the nearest crappy motel is like 20 minutes away or two yeah. no two hours away he said and uh like yeah they probably don't have like yeah a lot of money <laughs> it's just interesting when movies probably do not- try to predict the future yeah it's funny because it's not just like oh they make it things right or wrong mm-hmm. the technology that they invent for the fiction mm-hmm. is based in the technology that they currently have so that's why everything yeah. in star wars is very like 70s tech yeah I feel- whereas whereas like the tech never ended up like that. I feel like the best timeless one is 2001. Yeah. Because it's like... it. Though they still base it on like pay phones. That's you know true. I mean? so that's I'm saying, true. I'm, that's what I'm, no, I'm not saying that to discredit you. I'm just saying like that's like what I think is funny. Where it's like yeah. they're, they, 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 act, they came to the right conclusion, but they thought of it in the wrong way. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like they, they didn't foresee like us carrying phones around you know what i mean no no but i mean yeah okay the the telephone booth thing is is true but also they they have like facetime right he facetimed his daughter and then also like not just that but i'm thinking more like in the ship yeah Um, to be fair we didn't really have that in 2001 though no i know but i'm just saying you're just saying that it existed at all i'm just just saying the the prediction of technology is not as dated in 2001 as it is in Back to the Future, uh, Star Wars, ma- yeah. you know. Ma- I've never seen Star Trek, but I'm thinking that because it's more like systematic, like 2001. Like Star like, Trek would be a better example than Star Wars because technically Star Wars doesn't like exist in our universe, technically. No, yeah. Where Star just, Trek is meant to be like 300 years in the future. Yeah, but I'm just saying like, like it's, I think it's a little bit more timeless when it's a system. Yeah. And not so much like Specific like a technology. phone or like yeah. yeah like you know usable tangible technology for everyday use you know mm-hmm. it's more like computer systems or like the the cryo um, chambers like you know mm-hmm. yeah um so 
Logan goes home after this enlightening conversation with Pierce with his <laughs> robot hand and the tigers being extinct. Um, so it's revealed that Logan is shacked up with <laughs> Charles, Xavier, and Caliban, yes. who we did meet in X-Men Apocalypse, but it's, I don't think it's meant to be the same character. When did we meet? Um, he is a bald guy in X-Men Apocalypse, and that's when like Storm and Apocalypse are looking for new people, and they meet Olivia Munn, because he's able to sense, because remember, he's like, oh, I, I sensed uh, you coming. Oh, wait, he's the, he's the travel agent guy? Maybe. I don't remember. Yeah, I think so. <sighs> no. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, maybe. Because I feel He's like bald he had different and... powers, though. He probably did. Again, this is the classic example. Like, they decided they wanted to use this character later. Huh. So, I don't really know why of all the characters they decided to pick Caliban. Like, I remember when I saw this, I, I also hadn't seen X-Men Apocalypse. Mm. So, I remember watching this and being like, who the fuck is Caliban? <laughs> well, I think they could, you could just know him like as this one off though. Yeah, no, I eventually it didn't matter that I didn't know who he was. Yeah. Like, they do enough like it, it's not contingent on knowledge of him from the comics. I just Yeah. It was just a weird choice. I guess so. I mean he he's a sniffer, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um a glorified p- truffle pig. As he, a truffle pig, yeah. As he puts it. <laughs> yeah. Um so it's it's really sad. So Patrick Stewart it's really cool because Patrick Stewart like is a phenomenal actor, mm-hmm. and he finally gets to act. Yeah, in one yeah. of these movies, you know what I mean? Like, and not to say that he like again, not to like be dismissive of of the other X Men movies. Like, I I feel like there's a tendency with like, oh, see, like this is a real movie. Like those other movies are for <laughs> are for kids. This is like I feel like that's very reductive. Like I think there's a no, lot of he's posi- just, he's just like a classically trained theater actor. Like, like he's allowed yeah. to like kind of stretch those muscles a little bit more. Yeah, like he's just... I wonder if that was like... Do you think that was scripted? Or what he, part? Like where he's just like reciting prose like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> just um, <laughs> leave it to Patrick to be like... just. <laughs> he's probably just like, oh, my line's for the show I'm in next month. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like totally like quotes Macbeth like a whole like thing. But I also like he's like, almost like um, like a... Uh, like, you know, sometimes, like, radio signals, like, get picked up, so, like, walkie-talkies, like, <laughs> accidentally pick up, like, the radio station. Yeah, yeah. Like, I love how he's accidentally picking up, like, Taco Bell commercials, like... <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting. Try but, the new Chalupa. <laughs> but, but it's really... But it's interesting, um, and I love this idea of, like, what happened... Because I think when I saw the trailers... Yeah. You just saw him looking old. Yeah. I didn't realize that he was meant to have dementia. Yeah. So it was really interesting, like, this, this question... Again, going back to what James Mangold is talking about, it allows them to talk about a little more sophisticated ideas of, mm-hmm. you know, what happens to a super powerful telepath when he gets dementia? Yeah. Like, what is, what is, like, the effect of that or the consequences of that? Yeah. You, know, you can't control your power. Also, when did the government categorize him as a WMD? Like... <laughs> At some point, <laughs> I don't know. When did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. They were but... working together just two minutes ago. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, that, I mean, that is pretty scary as we saw. Like, It's he, like a great logical... His, he, we would have his, like, uh, his seizures. Yeah, exactly. Like, and, like, um, it's like a great... Lo- it, like, makes complete sense, like, if you're going to tell this story. Like, that's like a logical conclusion. I guess or, like, so, yeah. Like, I've never thought about, like, what would happen. Like, you know what I mean? You never really think of that. Because, again, when you're watching the movies, you're like... Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> like yeah you know what i mean like it's like they're yeah. saving the day like you don't think about these like heavier things yeah it's pretty sad but also like i feel like that would be like the one thing not to go but also at the same time i can see the argument where it's like he because because he no not that but because he uses it so much and it's so powerful and it's like like we only use like what five percent ten percent of our brain so he's like using a lot more and basically putting strain on that in order to like create i mean i don't know if that's how dementia works but like in this <laughs> professor x situation I, I think it's i think i think that's <laughs> that's you know i think that's like a, a totally valid like read on it i mm-hmm. my read was always just like when you have dementia you just like lose control essentially of your yeah. of your brain in a way so you know imagine that, that but someone like, like i think the implication like if professor x was evil yeah. He could do, like, when he was younger, he could have done all these things willingly. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's the point, is that, like, he just can't control his abilities anymore. Yeah. Ooh. The same way, like, someone who's old, like, can't, not just, like, has dementia, but, like, also, like, in line with how, like, 
realistic this movie is trying to be and how authentic it's trying to be yes. like old people like are incontinent like they like shit themselves you know what yeah, i mean like yeah um but, you this know is kind what? of like the psychological version of shitting himself basically you <laughs> yes. know what i mean but you know what i just thought of maybe when when um apocalypse hacked cerebro it kind of <gasps> fucked with like how much control he had over his head mind. cannon <laughs> i knowing james mangold and his i guess just based off of how he made this movie his opinion yeah of other x-men movies <laughs> i would i would bet that is not what he no meant. i'm just saying like but it's I interesting head cannon. <laughs> <laughs> um Also, one of the things, I think one of my favorite parts about the movie, again, especially considering when the movie came out in 2017, is the cinematography is just beautiful. Yeah. We talked about this with The Wolverine. Like, it's it's weird to see a superhero movie with, like, colors and contrast. (laughs) But this film has, like, really, I think it really has beautiful photography Mm -hmm. in it. And the the point where I wrote this down, like, I noticed enough to write it down was when they're in that water tower. Because there's, like, little holes in it. So it almost looks like Mm -hmm. a starry kind of, like... Like a, yeah. a starry night. Not not the painting. Just yes. like, like yeah. an actual starry night. Um, yeah, they did a good it's job of that. It's very visually interesting. Yeah, they did a good job of that, even though like they it was like a desert scene, which is usually like kind of desolate. And it was very visually striking, well despite it being a very up. barren Yeah, yeah. Locale. Like it, it's like when someone usually like films or photographs like the desert, it's it's very difficult to find like a, a beautiful shot like you a know? picturesque yeah yeah, just... yeah whereas like here like i feel like it was, it and if you, was and pretty if you... well executed yeah uh, and i think it comes down to like that contrast because like the dark the blacks are really black and the and the brights are really bright yeah right so it's like and they also shot his... at good times too like the sky like the good go- cotton, yeah oh the cotton like the... candy sky yes yeah, yeah. exactly no but then like you see like great contrast between like he'll have like his like dark black jacket yeah. contrasted with like like the the bright dirt or like the sky like it's a very high co- like yeah. color value i guess yeah. I'm, I'm again i'm not like a, a dp so I, my my uh, vocabulary on this is a little bit limited i'm probably using some of these terms incorrectly but you get the <laughs> idea um it's also weird to say charles to hear charles say fuck <laughs> again just because it's like it's just because i've seen him in what's essentially family films, mm-hmm. like as this character. Well, it's like, it's like. So it's just like, it's just jarring. <laughs> the same way it's jarring to see, uh, not Heath Ledger, um, Hugh Jackman yeah. like decapitate people. Uh, because yeah. I've seen, it's not just like superhero movies, it's I've seen these actors as these characters. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um. Well, I mean, have you ever like befriended a teacher like after you like aged out i see what you mean yeah and yeah you so talk. it's yeah. yeah you can like be a little bit more chill and like you know <laughs> yeah, he, yeah he's not professor anymore he's not professor anymore. he's just he's just chuck he's well just i don't charles. think they let you be professor when you kill your your well i guess i guess he didn't kill students i Yikes. think he killed i think he just injured like most of the students and then uh it said he killed seven who then they said who were x-men hundred and then murdered seven yeah yeah but we don't know which seven that's sad yeah, I kind of like that where it's like you don't know who. Yeah. Clearly, all the important people are gone. Otherwise, they'd still be around. Yeah. Because re- presumably, this really is sad. presumably this is again. It really does not matter. No. Yeah. Because X Men, the timelines really do not matter. <laughs> okay. But presumably, this is this is in like the new timeline yeah. established by Days of Future Past. Okay. Um, which is kind of sad because it's like they did all that and saved the day, and then like shortly after. Yeah. You know. Um, but again, it's really not because I guess Mangold does not care about continuity. I mean, he even said some interviews like he wanted, <laughs> like, he really, like, he said it in the future specifically so he wouldn't have to deal with, like, continuity. Oh, like, that's smart. Or, yeah. Not, not so much following continuity, but more so having to deal with stuff that, like, happened a year ago. Like, now it's, like, years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because so he really sad. didn't want to have to deal with it. It's so sad because they're like his kids, like, you know, like, yeah. he really loves his students, you know, his, mm-hmm. his heart was in it. Yeah. Um, then we get a reference to the Statue of Liberty, which I, I like that it, like, that they're, st- they, that was funny. Yeah. Like, they tie it all, they try to, like, tie it all in. Yeah. With references to that. I think there's kind of, like, a pseudo reference to X-Men Origins Wolverine, where he's like, you were, you were an assassin when I found you, and, uh, like, you're no, fighting no, the, with cage the, matches. Yeah, the cage fighter, yeah. Oh, like, so the first X-Men, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I like things like that. I do like how it's not completely disregarding 
the history of the of the other films. Mm-hmm. Though again, it very much like wants to distance itself, especially from the franchise's like biggest failures. Yeah, obviously, like it's not you know gonna explicitly reference like. You remember your brother, Victor? Like, you know. <laughs> he looks like Victor in this movie sometimes. sometimes well, he definitely is doppelganger what, looks like Victor. What with is the, it? Like, the X4? Cut. X24. X24, yeah. He looks like Victor. And I mean, he, he acts like Victor, too. So. He does act like Victor. Maybe, th- maybe that was intentional. Oh, you're going to like some of the... I have a piece of trivia for you. Well, let's like. fucking get to it, bro. All right, we're going to the movie. <laughs> All right, Charles is old. Wolverine is old. Um. <laughs> <laughs> also, I'm just kind Caliband of... Caliband conf- is bald. <laughs> um, it's just really sad to see Charles like this. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, it's sad. Like, if, if you have a parent that goes through this, it's really sad to watch them. Because they may be, yeah. like, really smart. And, like, really well put... Like, they're with it. And then now to see them yeah. so helpless, both physically and mentally, mm-hmm. is really sad. And I think we as the audience kind of feel that way, too. Because, like... I feel connected we've grown Because we connected yeah. to him. We've seen him. We We've seen him oh. in several of these films now yeah um he is, both old and young yeah he is professy you know like like minus like again it's 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 wolverine magneto and professor x like they are the core of this franchise mm-hmm. um and in fact i don't think any there have been any films without them at least one of them so far mm. um and there won't be until you get to new mutants which is basically just like its own random thing mm. um which we'll get to Weird. um um uh oh just I just I just like how we get to see um we get to see uh titties Who's titties? The bachelorette parties in the limo. Oh yeah. <laughs> they flash the driver and he smirks. He's like eh. <laughs> Yeah. At first I was confused, like why those boys were shouting USA, but then l- later we find out like he's like in El Paso and like sometimes would cross like the border and stuff. So they're probably like just really rude loner <laughs> yeah high schoolers going to prom with no dates so, yeah you know well what I, what I was gonna say is like I wish because they're chanting USA like I almost wish we got insight into like what's like the state of affairs in the yeah. United States at this time like is there like a big foreign policy th- like I know it really doesn't matter but yeah. like again because the original comic was so much based in like the stat like what was the status quo of America yeah. at that time yeah I, I wish again. I wish I had a little bit more insight into what's like, yeah. uh, what's going on in the culture with the non, like with the normies. Like that's, what? That's a good point because, like, when he, like, first of all, he crosses the border pretty much every, like, seemingly every day to go work in the U.S. And then, what he's using that money in Mexico, like, like, yeah, <laughs> like there's definitely some difficult taxes going on. But also, like, <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, he doesn't show his passport when he goes through the border. Like, it's just so easy. He's just like, like he, literally, he literally knows the, 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 the guard, person by name. Yeah. He's like, hey, Steve, or whatever. <laughs> um, so maybe maybe the borders are lightened up, you know, over the years. And it's it's easier to get past. And like, because they were always talking about the Canada border, too. So like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. But it sounds more like they'd be smuggled in, though. Because they were like, you need to come to Florida. I, see, I don't know what I don't know why that ha- I, again I don't understand what the whole thing about the Canadian border is supposed to be because we also like like Richter is yeah. like talking to someone like uh-huh. via like radio or something yeah. and saying like oh the satellites will be done. like what's sad like, I, I feel like the store like they don't give me enough understanding of like what's going on and also why would they like why okay so they were made in Mexico, and then they can easily go to the U.S. Okay, so that so they can like seek asylum in Canada is what it sounds like. Like he literally said, like, "Oh, we can seek asylum." <laughs> I guess so because I don't think Eden is in Canada. I think Eden is where they were, and he was like healing for a couple of days. I think that's supposed to be Eden because that's in North Dakota. Yes, yes. So I don't like. Well, yeah. What are they going to? What are they looking for in Canada? Asylum, but like, isn't. Doesn't that have to be like politically motivated? Or yeah, I don't, I don't know. So that's like, what I'm saying. Like, criminally, I, but like they're just like yeah. lab rats the, essentially that got loose. Like I don't know. This ah! this is what holds me back on the movie just a little bit. Because every time I watch it, I go like, you know what? I was wrong about last time. This is great. This is a great movie. And then like these little like things bother me. Well, you know, and I still think it's really good. But it's like I, I can't bring myself to say it's it's like this is a great movie. You know I. Channeling James, I would say, you know, it doesn't really matter. 
Like the story is Who's just James? James Mangold. Who is James? Oh, 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 oh. So, so you know, like it doesn't really matter. Like this is a story, and this is all no, but, you need to know. But I think it does matter because, like, that's like their goal. So it's like, what, what, where is the hope? Like, why can't they seek asylum in America? Yeah, or just like. It, it, I, I, it can be Canada. I just I just would like more elaboration. And it's not incidental. Like, I think maybe James Mangold thinks it's incidental. But, like, mm -hmm. it, it it is the source of their hope. Yeah. So, like... For sure. You know, so I don't know. Um, but anyway, so he drops off the Bachelorettes. The, the Bachelorette party. Yeah. Um, and this is where he hits show, we see that he gets his glasses. It still has, like, the, the, like the, the like tag the on tag it. It still has the tag on it. Um, he... So here's the thing, is like, back to the story thing, is like, <laughs> this movie I think is really serious thematically, yeah. aesthetically, yeah. but the story is just as silly and goofy as like any other story. Well, it's a very classic road trip. It's very simple. No, no, but I mean in terms of like the, like the secret experiment. Uh, yeah. the evil government agent like like all of the stuff like i feel like the movie has somewhat of like a smugness to it like we're better than those kinds of movies but like uh -huh. it kind of does the same stuff just aesthetically in a different way yeah um like why would they need to grow mutants when like like they're being yeah. naturally created by just like passing on genes and stuff yeah I particularly well to create yeah. soldiers but soldiers to fight who and I don't mind stories like that, but it just feels like there's a weird disconnect between that and the aesthetic. Uh -huh. And, like, the, the thematic ambitions yeah. of the story. It, it's a weird... It's like a weird dissonance, uh -huh. kind of. Especially all of the stuff with Richard Grant, uh -huh. um, who plays Xander Rice. Oh, the Viscount Christopher Walken, yeah. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. Um, I just think... I, I like Richard Grant, but I feel like... He, it's just like a very cartoonish villain performance. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's his, I think it's just the way it's written. It just feels like a very, like, I feel like there's no dimensionality to this character. He's just like a mustache twirling villain. Like, I don't know what his aim is. I don't know what his goal is. I don't know what makes him tick. I don't know why we should care about him. He's very one dimensional. <laughs> well, you know? I guess, you know, maybe we don't know a lot so that it isn't too silly. Like, it's, like, it's just, ah. do you know what I'm saying? Like, like, because they obviously think they're doing a good thing. They think, like, they're, you know, like, building soldiers to fight I don't know who. And then also, like, you know, having these kids just run around in the, in the world. It could be a hazard because, like, they're mm -hmm. not acclimated to society. And so, like, you know, as we saw, <laughs> someone could ask how you're going to pay for something and get their head sliced off. So, uh, you know, so it just, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I I see where you're coming from. I just feel like it's not that you have to give me more silly details about him. I just want more emotional details. Like I want more, a little more pathos, gotcha. if that makes sense. Right. Um, something really interesting about this movie is the fact and obviously it's not literally how it is in real life, but X-Men comic books exist oh, in yeah. this. Yeah. Um, it's very meta. Um, presumably in this universe, it's not like the Marvel comics. It's that someone decided to write, like the way we like adapt real life events into movies and like sometimes like they're very not realistic, right? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like- in this timeline, they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, oh, but, like but, the, whole, the whole mystique thing in Paris happened. So. Yeah, but even if they didn't, they still knew mutants existed, yeah, um, yeah. even in the original timeline. But I feel like if, if mutants existed in our world, like, that would happen. Like, they would create, like, fantastical versions of them for fiction purposes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's really interesting that they have this. It's really interesting that they have this element in the film. Um, and, yeah, I just think it's kind of cool. Um, um so he gets an Uber call, I guess, for a limo for uh, Gabriella. Yeah. Like, she's like, the only way I can get in touch with you is if you, uh, you know, if, if I call you up through Uber. In the future, can you pick your Uber drivers? It's very convenient. <laughs> um. Anyway, so he shows up and she's like, you need to take Laura and me to the border. Oh, wait, I'll pay wait, wait. you. But before we get to that, I'd like to point out that 
that Charles is not crazy and that there was a Statue of Liberty there. Oh, that is the guy. Yeah, that's right. He, a, he wasn't referring to the original X because he's been because he's been talking. He's been like, communicating with Laura yeah. and talking about Statue of Liberty. Yeah, and then yeah, and yeah. He, uh, Hugh uh, Logan <laughs> kind of dismisses it. Yeah, but then when he goes to see and Gabriella, it's like Statue of Liberty. Like uh, it's like the motel's like name is like it's Liberty or something. Liberty Motel. Yeah, it has like a picture of the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. yeah. Um. But anyway, she's like, "I'll give you all this money. Please take us." And oh, I even brought this up. Uh, Logan's looking to get a boat. He yes. wants to take him and Charles out on the water and just live the rest of their days on a boat, uh, mm -hmm. leaving poor Caliban, <laughs> never out, really leaving him out to dry, literally. <laughs> never really seen, like, boat people before, but sure. I don't know. Um, but he's like, okay, fuck it, I'll do it because um, I can use the money. Yeah, to, um, to buy said boat. To buy said boat, yeah. So he goes... Uh, he goes back home to basically get some stuff for the road and then comes yeah. back... Yeah. This bitch dead. She, yeah, she was dead. She's dead. super dead. She, she looked like gray, like yeah. <laughs> um, damn. <laughs> so there. I. So he goes back home. So he goes back home <laughs> to Mexico, and, <laughs> and then he. And he's like, "You won't believe the morning I." Had. <laughs> and he goes to do something, and and, and, and then, then, is like. What the fuck is this? He pulls out a backpack from <laughs> the trunk. Yeah, and a bouncy ball. And he's like, wait a minute. I know that bouncy ball. Also, he never paid the, the motel in lady. But she was a bitch, so it's okay. <laughs> um, but, um, she's lucky that Gabriella stopped her because Laura was going to rip her. Like, watching it, knowing what happens in the movie. Because when you're first watching it, like, if you're not been watching the trailers, you may not know, like, who, like what Laura is or what she can do. Yeah, yeah. So when you first watch that scene, like you're like, whatever, but then watching it, knowing like what Laura is, yeah. it's like <laughs> that woman does not know how close she just was she to get been, her head got chopped she off. She would have been a sliced ham. Um, like, you know, and I, I'm confused. Where was she hiding? In the back seat? In the trunk. In the trunk? Yeah, presumably when he went into the the hotel, the motel room, she like snuck into the trunk. She just like picked it with her. Yeah, with her claw, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so Charles is like, "This is my good amigo Laura," and, and he starts speaking Spanish. But <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun to edit. Okay, so I don't know why the mic keeps. <sighs> anyway, um, so Laura starts eating some cereal. And Charles is like, she is the one I was telling you about. <laughs> um, but so Pierce funny. and his buddies show up and they're like, and, and they're and they're after the girl. Um, I have to say, I really like the CGI hand, mm. um, the robot hand. I, I think again, it's like what we were talking about before. Because there's less VFX shots, like each shot has like a little bit more money put into it. So I'm like, mm. it looks pretty good. Like it looks pretty realistic. Yeah, I didn't know it was CGI. How how would he have a robotic hand like? Because he takes it off later, and it's an actual thing sitting on an actual table. <laughs> but it doesn't move. Um, unless it was a CGI table. Who knows? <laughs> um, anyway, they send they send people in to get Laura, uh, yeah. and this poor fool gets his head chopped off. <laughs> she just carries it out like it's a basketball. <laughs> um, <laughs> Laura's just awesome. Um... <laughs> She's small but mighty. She is small but she, mighty. She's a woman of few words, but she gets shit yeah. done. Also, I love how Logan like was gonna just leave her. <laughs> like he gets he gets Charles in the limo and he's like, We we mustn't forget about Laura. Yeah, yeah. We mustn't forget Oh, I like how he was like trying to calm her down. <laughs> When they were like the, the he was like it's okay. The like the convoy was coming, and he was like, "Oh, it's okay. It, it's El Auto Train Choo Choo." <laughs> it's, like, it's like, dude, she does not need you to do this. She speaks English. <laughs> um. Anyway, so it's it's kind of funny how like they're genuinely afraid of her. Yeah. Like it's pretty awesome though, because he's like, because we get to see Pierce, who up to this point has been like kind of intimidating and scary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, they, they captured Caliban at this point, like yeah. you know, like. Oh, but then he's sad. like, but then he's like, basically like runs into the crowd of his minions. He's like, "All right, you guys handle this." Yeah, I mean, because like think about it, it's like Logan in his prime, but with like the untailored emotions of a child, like you know. I'm talking about Pierce, not his doppelganger. I know. I'm talking about Laura. 
I'm oh, talking about Pierce I think being Pierce. afraid of Laura. Oh, 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 oh. I thought you were saying Pierce is cool. Oh, no, okay. I'm oh, saying oh, Pierce oh. is genuinely afraid of Laura because she is not as reasonable to talk with like a grown-up. She is a child, and so if she gets mad, like she does with the with the little riding horsey thingy, she she tries to slash things that she gets frustrated it's her or first mad reaction. with. You it's know, slash yeah, things. that's yeah. her first reaction. So he's like, you know what? I like my head. I don't really care about that other guy, but I I myself like my own head. So uh, yeah. So he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep it yeah. <laughs> for as long as possible. This this the ensuing action sequence is pretty cool. Um, I think <laughs> yeah. I think the action in general in this movie is pretty good. Yeah. Um, but this one especially, where we really get to Laura, see Laura like jump around. She's like a little spider monkey. Yeah. How does she have all those skills, man? Like I always forget she has a foot claw. Uh, yeah. Which why does she have just one long one? That makes it seem like she has just like a giant toe as a foot. No, no, it was on both of them, right? Well, only it only comes out of one foot, but also only one claw comes out of the foot. You think it would be like five? <laughs> Or like three. <laughs> so it makes it seem like there's just like one big toe. <laughs> um, I'm a toe. I'm a toe um, baby. But <laughs> um, people don't know that. Everyone, she's referencing a TikTok that we made because I was at a restaurant and I put my sweatshirt over my head and I just looked like a toe. So I went, I'm a toe. And then he said, I'm a telly tubby. And I said, telly tubby, not teletubby. And he said, oh yeah. The people do not care. <laughs> anyway, um, she's got the one claw because she's a lady. Yeah, apparently Charles is like, oh, it has to do with her gender. <laughs> because apparently the the Wolverine gene takes after the the lion. Um, or just I think that's an like... example of nature of like. <laughs> anyway, 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 I think it's an interesting parallel. I, I don't know if this was intentional, but I just thought it was interesting that like. Charles kind of serves as this like mentor or like calming figure for both Laura, but also Logan. Like when he first met Charles, yeah, you know, like because like Charles is like trying to calm Laura down and be there for her. This in a in in a not the same, but in a somewhat similar way to like the beginning of Logan and Charles' relationship. Yeah, um, so that was an interesting parallel. Yeah, I think because he he knows that people like. Logan and and uh what's his what's his name what's his real name Eric and and Laura. they have the potential they, to be good yeah they have a lot of anger and that's what's kind of fueling them but he he knows that they can channel something else in order to be like really good and they can rise control above themselves it. yeah it's all about control which is why it's so sad to see him not have as much control <laughs> over him, himself now yeah um but. This this scene also illustrates again. This kind of feels like it's trying to be like the anti superhero movie, um, and again, I think I talked about this before on the show. Like I am not a huge fan when things are subversive for their own sake, where it's like, hey, this thing that you like, you're dumb for liking it. I feel like this movie. What are you talking about? I'm I'm just talking about. I think a lot of times in movies like that are trying to be like subversive. Yeah, but but. I said this is not like. Oh, that, it's not like that. I'm saying it's not like that. I think it has enough original stuff where it like feels like very like it's trying to just do its own thing mm. um, as opposed to like its whole existence just to be like, those movies are dumb. We're well, cooler than that. Well, you did just, well, you're contradicting yourself because you said that it was earlier, but. No, I'm saying that it, but I'm saying it's not, it's in, there's enough substance there where it's not like it's only existence is that. Uh -huh. So no, I'm not contradicting myself. Well, I if actually listen to what I'm saying <laughs> is that it's more nuanced than that and is trying to tell its own interesting, engaging story and doesn't only exist to just Say how silly those movies are. It does say that, but it doesn't only but exist. But it to do has that. some snoot. A little bit of smugness. I said. I said a little bit. <laughs> oh, right. twisting my words. Go go. Anyway, go. all I was gonna say is another moment of smugness. <laughs> well, is when they try to break through the fence and it doesn't work. And I did a research <laughs> on this, and apparently that was intentional. Where he was like, they originally were just having. They get through the fence. He was like, no, they'll be expecting that to work. <laughs> audience will expect that to work uh, we don't want them to expect it they, we don't want them to be right so it won't work <laughs> who said that james yeah I didn't uh, interview. <laughs> um that was funny though <laughs> it was kind of because because he's right like in in superhero movies like things just go there or just way. action movies. yeah or action movies yeah and like like that's why i thought it was funny in apocalypse when um olivia munn like saves herself like by 
doing her little pokey thing into the building, but like yeah. she doesn't do it long enough, so like she still ends up falling and like rolling over. Yeah, I thought that was funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so then, uh, they have, like, Gabriella's phone, and they watch this little video. How the hell did she make this video? Because it has, like, editing. It's not just, like, behind-the-scenes footage. Like, she has, like, voiceover. Yeah, she made it on iMovie. Yeah, like, I don't know. (laughs) It's, like, very expository and very, like, see what I'm saying? Like, this movie tries to be so serious, but, like, this movie, that's, like, a very goofy plot device where she, like, makes this little video. Well, I mean, I think it, it makes sense, but, like... It, it just, it, it it just makes been, me question the logic, is all I'm saying. Yeah. You know? No, yeah. I mean, if you pay attention to it, like, it, yeah, it seems silly. But, like, um, I, also, I feel like... Also, she footage that, like, how would she get access to? It's like, some of the footage is, like, from, like, body cam footage of, like, the soldiers. No. Yeah, one of them was, remember when the when the kid jumps off the roof? Oh, yeah. I don't know. But, uh... I think they just wanted to show these scenes, but couldn't figure out how to, like, integrate it into the plot. So they were just like... Yeah, I feel like using them as, like, actual... Like, as their own thing would have probably taken too long. So maybe they were like, let's just cut it down and put it all in one video. Yeah. Because, like, it would make sense for them to be, like, flipping through all these horrible pictures and maybe a few short videos and then, like, get to the end where Gabrielle is like, if you're seeing this, I'm dead. But here's what you gotta do, you know? Yeah, like I was. Yeah, I wish it was more just like her talking about it. And yeah, and like there's like photos or something. Yeah. Like I don't really know if we need to see video of it. Mm. Um, though it is pretty harrowing imagery, especially you could see like she, they talk about like like Mexican like the mothers were just like Mexican women that they like abducted and like yeah you know and you see like the operating like the the table or like the little chair and it has like blood everywhere yeah right? yeah um like at the lower <laughs> regions so clearly you know what I mean like, <laughs> yes from, like, from giving birth yeah, yeah. so it's it's I, I like that stuff that stuff's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I also like the video um, where they're having the birthday party. Yeah, and, and then like, he's shut like, it down. He's like, no birthday. They, were, looked- they weren't born. They have no names. Like, don't get attached. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, like, here they think they're doing, like, a fucking cancer research project. And they're like, what? these kids what are mean? dying. <laughs> Well, because remember. When- well, I, think, I think they know what it is. I think it's just a cover story. Eventually. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it's just, it's, it's too fun. I'm just, it's just funny imagining her, like, making this on iMovie. <laughs> like, what did she have the time? <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, they go to this, uh, this is like this cute little uh, diversion. They go to this like, uh, kind of like, a, like a, a gas station kind of like convenience store. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> well, I didn't see them filling up on gas. It was in the background. <laughs> um, and it's cute. Logan starts to kind of be like a papa. <laughs> yeah. Because she like goes in, she's like stealing stuff, and she's like gonna kill the guy. And he's like, "That's not okay." <laughs> and he's like giving her quarters for the ride. Like he, he's yeah. a cute papa. He because he doesn't know how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> he uses later. He's like, "I suck at this." Yeah. <laughs> um. Also, so yeah, they go to this uh, casino in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Um, For some reason, uh, every time they dupe me, every time, because both times I've seen this, I think they're going to like Las Vegas. Uh, like Las Vegas, That's or, what I thought or too. Reno, or something like that. But then they're like Oklahoma City. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they're going to. That makes sense. Because, yeah, because I remember watching it and I remembered the casino stuff and I was like, why would they go to Las Vegas? That doesn't make any, like, why would they go that way? Yeah. To get, but, then I, but then when they say, like, they're in Oklahoma City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they get new clothes, and Charles is so cute with his new hat. Yes, he he's so excited. Fedora. He can't even wait. He can't even wait to get it into the <laughs> to the hotel room. He's like starts throwing the the packing paper everywhere. <laughs> oh, so presumably they paid for that. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, well, they do have all that cash. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I I realize in this moment, um, that this is like an interesting, like. This movie is both about taking care of your elderly parent mm-hmm. and about taking care of your child, but it's also about a third other thing, which is about taking care of both of them at the same time. Mm. And I think that's like a thing that we don't see a lot of movies about of like, like, you know, you have to take care of like your, your parent who took care of you, but you also have children. Mm. And like, I feel like that's like very stressful for a lot of like people. Like, yeah, it's just like they can't afford like, like, um, I don't know what they call them, like outpatient nurses, right? Like, like oh, what are the ones where like, yeah, they come to yeah. your house? Like, you're not in a home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, or, or they can't pay for that, or they can't pay for, like, to actually put them in a home or something. And, like, yeah, or, um, like, they don't, like, the family isn't super big, so they don't have, like, extra support. Like, 
Yeah, call your brother like, hey, can you come over and like watch mom for like a few yeah. hours or whatever. Like, so it's like, I, I noticed that in that scene when they're in the elevator where it's like, he's like taking care of Charles, and, but all, Laura's pressing all the buttons, like, in like, yeah. I just thought it was like a really sweet, intimate, like, I feel like we don't get to see that a lot. Like, yeah. and uh, sweet's the wrong word, but just something like that's very real, like it has some teeth to it, yeah. you know? Um, I feel like we don't get to see that they're, a lot. They're a cute little trio. Um, so they go to the hotel room and then they, and they, um, they're watching TV and they're watching the Western, um, Shane. Which this movie, which James Mangold has said, like this movie is, it's kind of become like a meme about this movie. Like film bros, like it's actually a Western. It's not really a superhero movie. It's a Western. Eh. Like that's like, it's like a meme where it's like, no shit. It's a Western. Yeah, obviously. Right. (laughs) Like, um, but it's like very heavily influenced by Westerns like Shane and like things like that. What? What? Oh, oh, you're talking about Logan. Yeah, the movie Logan. Oh, 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 oh. I was like, they made a superhero movie in the West? What? No, 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 no. I'm saying that. I gotcha. I gotcha. It was an influence. It was an influence. And this movie is very much like a neo-Western. Yeah. Very, very, it's, it's very similar to something like No Country for Old Men, I feel like, which is like mm-hmm. the prototypical neo-Western or like like the best example of it. Um, And it's, yeah, it's very, Jane Mangle, I think I said in interviews, like it's very much based on Shane. Hmm. Um, okay, I mean, they literally show a clip from it or several clips. Uh, Laura quotes it at the end. <laughs> yeah. um, which is very, which is kind of weird, but like, <laughs> she, she memorized. It. I mean, she she only knew her father for less than a week, so what else is she supposed yeah, to say at his funeral? That's that's something I kind of want to talk about. I, it's very, it pulls at the heartstrings, but I don't know if this movie earns their relationship. I feel like Logan just spends most of the movie just being angry at her and yelling at her. Yeah, well, well, I feel but like I feel like there's no moments of warmth, is all I'm saying. Like, well, I feel like we don't get any moments of warmth between the two of them, except maybe the dinner scene, which we'll talk about later, but that's more like, like a communal warmth. I guess so, but, like, I feel like going back to what you were just saying, it's, like, taking care of both of them. Like, he's so focused on taking care of Charles that he's, like, really strict with her in a way, and, like, be, like he, he doesn't really have time to deal with how, like, she is not, like, acclimated to, like, living in the world. Like, having any social skills. Yeah, like, so, like, <laughs> she's, like, eating handful, like, fistfuls of food. Like, he's, like, here, use use a fork. Yeah. And she's, like, getting, like, and she's eating, like, fistful, like, um, spoonfuls of corn. And he's, like, you don't need that much. It's okay. But also, to be fair, we find out later that <laughs> a professor says that, um, like, they've been on the road for, like, 72 hours and, like, have only, uh, or no, 25 hours or something like that and have only eaten one meal. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's a little fair. I don't know. Um, but anyway, but anyway, we're jumping ahead a little bit. I, but, I, I like how um, he says, <laughs> I'm not a box of avocados, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was pretty funny. <laughs> so I would say this movie is, like, has some pretty funny parts. <laughs> yeah. Um, and... But then we get, so Logan goes out, um, he leaves him at the hotel room to go get a new car because the limo has been like fucked up from the fight. Yeah. Um, and when he comes back. He would definitely uh, recognize it. Yeah. Uh, but when he comes back, he realizes that like the evil men are there, but then all of a sudden everyone starts having a mental seizure. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty cool. Like seeing like everyone kind of like frozen in place. Mm -hmm. Um, but Logan eventually, because he, him and Laura like, are like a little bit stronger than everyone else. Like they're Mm -hmm. able to. They, they still struggle, but they're able to kind of, like, move a little bit. Yeah. Um. So they give him his, his serum or whatever. He he stops seizing. And and then they leave the hotel. And Laura, then we hear... Laura also slices some dudes up. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um. And then on the, <laughs> on the road with the radio, we hear them talking about, like, what just happened. It's saying mm-hmm. this is very similar to the Westchester incident. Yeah. Right? So this is when we first realize that... Like, what happened? Where's everyone they're, else? They're kind of, like, on the run. Yeah. Well, because here's the thing is that originally, um, like, earlier in the film, Charles is like, where's everyone? Like, what did you do? What did you do? Mm-hmm. I believe in the Old Man Logan comic, Logan killed all the X-Men because he was being mind-controlled by someone. By, yeah. by, by, by Mysterio. Classic. By Mysterio, the, super, the Spider-Man oh, villain. Oh, um, d- <laughs> um... So, so I think maybe that was kind of like a red herring for people who like knew the old man Logan stuff. Yeah, that is plucked straight from Greek mythology. That is basically the plot of the real Hercules and not the 1997 Disney Channel movie. 
<laughs> Just in case you didn't know. In case you didn't know. Okay. <laughs> um, so it's kind of, so it's like, it's like, I, a part of me wishes that Logan was the reason because it's like, no. a lot of the movie, no, 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 because I, well, you're just saying that because it'd be sad. But I'm saying <laughs> on a narrative level, it would make the situation a little more like, I have a problem with Logan's arc in the movie in that like, I, I don't. Like, he's, he's not very active throughout the story. Hmm. Like, very much, like, kind of just, like, doing things because, like, he's being told to. Well, that's very much a, a theme. Like, you've said that about other movies. <laughs> We've said that about other movies, too. Oh, uh, but what, what in, in what regard about this movie? That he's very passive. But I don't think that's the ultimate point of the movie. Is that, like... No, I know. The point I'm of the movie is that he, that, like, doesn't want to open up emotionally. That's, that's been uh, kind of a thing in the past with, with Wolverine and movies. Is things just happen to him. Yeah. Well, I guess that's a. I guess it's just a recurring problem. Then. I don't know. Well, my my point being is that it almost like would make it because I feel like there was there was a tragedy with the old man Logan. There was an element of tragedy. Yeah. With the old man Logan storyline and that like he's the cause of a lot of this. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this universe, like he, um, it, I think this is equally good, just different because it's like it's really sad and sweet because he's like trying to protect Charles. Like he did, he like doesn't want to tell him. Because yeah. Charles, like, doesn't quite remember. Yeah. You know? Not all the time, at least. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, so they're, they're driving along. And uh, he accidentally, they almost get hit by an auto truck. Mm-hmm. So, they kind I, of knock, what? I'm confused as how the, the other family gets not, like. I think the other, excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was yawning. <laughs> uh, I think the auto truck kind of makes... Logan veer, and then he kind of makes them veer. Oh, okay. Um, so Cause, anyway. Because they just, like, calmly pulled off to the side. Yeah. <laughs> like... The the family, I, I gotta be honest, I don't know any of their names. Do they even say their names? Yes, oh, they do. Oh. They all introduce themselves. Catherine. I don't remember anyone. They say it when they're, like, uh, Nate. Nate is the son, Catherine. Catherine. And then what's the dad's name? <sighs> Mr. Munson. <laughs> Mr. Munson. Okay, we'll go Mr. Munson. The guy with Jerry Curls from Coming to America. Yes, he was. He has um, a cute little nose. <laughs> yeah, he does. He, his nose is very cute, I guess. I got a thing for noses. Vivian does love a thing. We're watching movies and she's like, oh, that's a good nose. <laughs> um, it started in the sixth grade. Because <laughs> I like this boy did a really big nose. <laughs> um, Dylan, if you're listening, uh, disregard. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they have all these horses like in like their... Like the tractor trailer kind of thing. Yeah, and, yeah. But Charles is able to use his mind powers. He's like, he's go like, back home. <laughs> Horses. You guys can't see. He has her fingers to her temple. Yeah, like, I got, he's got his fingers to his temple and he's closing his eyes and he's like, giddy up, Porsche. He, he goes, he's going, oh wait, I can communicate with them. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought he could only communicate with humans. But yeah, I don't know. Apparently not. not. I don't know. So it's so funny how they're like, oh, is this your family? He's like, yeah, that's my daughter, Laura, and, and my dad, uh, Chuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, and he says lo- James. He doesn't say he doesn't say Logan. Well, yeah, I think his, like, basically the lay low, he, yeah, he he goes back. Because that's, like, his, like, user profile on, like, the Uber thing is, like, James Howlett. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, like, his birth name. Yeah. Technically. He got so many fucking names on Yankee Bub. Um, <laughs> like when he's looking at the doc, I guess like three James. <laughs> you gotta do- so the family invites. They're so grateful. <laughs> they invite them for dinner. Yes. And Logan's like, I don't know. Chuck's like, that would be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's like, I'm fucking starving. <laughs> Why didn't they just stop at a Taco Bell or something on the way? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, that'll throw a cowman off his off their trail. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so they go to dinner and I, and I just love this family scene, um, uh, which supposedly a lot of the dialogue was improvised. Oh, really? I'm sure, I'm sure it was like, I can't imagine it was improvised like completely. It seems like I would imagine maybe it was more like they improved during rehearsals and then kind of like let the actors kind of guide what the scene would be Hmm. and then like wrote that down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I feel like a lot of this is like, feels very written. Like it doesn't feel very like... Because if it was really improv, there'd be a lot more like overlapping dialogue. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, but in any case, I really love this, and there's a really great dynamic. Um, it's like one of the few times we get to see Logan like happy. 
at, at all yeah. um, in this movie. And, like, he's laughing and, the, you know, like, oh, you were my pupil. If I said you were a good pupil, I would choke on my food. <laughs> And they're laughing or whatever, and you yeah. know, and we get to kind of get and a sense of like the normal fam, just they're just normal people, yeah. with, you know, and wanting it, to travel. It, it's and- sweet because like that's when I think Laura starts to like, um, like grasp the concept of like family. I mean, yes, like yes. I mean, she knew it beforehand, I guess, with like her friends and the nurses and whatnot. But like this is like different, and like yes, I think that 100%. what later leads on to her, you know, being like calling him daddy, you know, like. Accepting, yeah. accepting him as a father figure. Yeah, but then he did. So, mm-hmm. anyways, they're eating. Um, it's it's just so sad to kind of see what happens to them. Um, yeah, what the bug? Because they're the only people trying to do the right thing. Yeah, and they get and, and they get punished. You know what I mean? What the bug? Um, but I'm jumping a little bit ahead. So, um, <laughs> Logan is essentially afraid to open up because you know basically he takes Charles up to bed to put him to bed basically, and like yeah. Charles is like. Oh, this is so great, blah, 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 blah. We have to get her to eat or whatever. And Logan <sighs> is very much like, very dismissive. He, 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 that's a, that's his whole character arc. It's just like, he's afraid to open up. And he goes into more detail later because he's like, you know, like the people, when I care about people, they die. Yeah, um, we you need know. this. But um, so meanwhile, uh, the water gets turned off because the land surrounding this family's property has been bought up by like this big company yeah and like they wouldn't they, they you know they were holdouts they wouldn't sell the land so they kind of mess with them and they turn off the water so the dad's like okay i'm gonna go and fix it but logan's like i'll come with you yeah so so they go um and again we get this thing about like the cloned up corn it's like super corn because again they mention it like they this is very much a science fiction thing it's not just like how we do like gmos like Mm -hmm. they're talking about how like they use the corn for basically like healing stuff or like making people feel better like the corn syrup Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. um (laughs) and again they talk about like oh like you know he says like oh back in you know back in the day a bad day was just a bad day Uh like the idea that it's like you know you just went on with it whereas now like but again it's like they're they're, they're these little hints of society and i Mm -hmm. wish i knew more about this society and i realized watching this and I feel like I say this a lot. This would have made a really amazing limited series as opposed to a, a movie. Yeah. Um, because then you could kind of do a lot more exploration. Because the film almost feels like it's divided into, like, episodes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's, like, the yeah. family episode. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, you, you, you're you giggling and have, like, a very devilish grin on your face. So what are you, what are you laughing about? What, what do you want to tell me? Because <laughs> you... You were talking about how, like, it's not just, like, corn syrup for, like, ketchup and stuff. It's, like, you know, like, elixirs or whatever, I guess, like, to feel good and stuff. Um, And then (laughs) I was thinking of orgasm in a can. And I was like, where is that that from? And it was from Big Mouth. There was like, there was like a. Um, I don't know if this if this corn is being used for that. I mean, when I I love popcorn, but I don't think I love it that much. You know, like, like it was like a futuristic episode. It was like orgasm in a can. can. Can I ask like what's inside the can? Is it just aerosol and then you spray it and you smell it? Like what? Yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of like in the commercial in the Lorax when they're like selling air, they're selling the air. Yeah, where they just open it and like. You know, yeah. except you mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, well, um, so yes, Logan. Yes, many episodes. Yes, yes. Man, come on. <laughs> I'm, am I the only one taking this serious? No, I am. I, I write notes. I try to go through the film. I analyze it. I know. We're analyzing. <sighs> and also laughing. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, so Logan goes to help the guy, and then the the, the mean businessmen come, yeah. and they're trying to intimidate the dad. And Logan's like, "Fuck off!" And then he like breaks, like, takes their shotgun and breaks it over his knee. Yeah. Uh, and they run away. It's Meanwhile, nice. uh, prof- the the sun kind of slowly starts to rise, and Professor X hears Logan come in, and <laughs> Professor X makes this wonderful little speech, mm-hmm. um, kind of monologue. Talking about how great this was and how he's like, you know, like I know what happened, something bad happened, and you know, we've just been running and running and running, and that's kind of like another theme of the movie, this idea of just like 
running away from your problems as opposed to confronting it head on. Mm -hmm. And that relates to the idea of like opening up because it's easier just to close yourself off. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's, it's easier to do that than be brave and be vulnerable, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, but it's not Logan. It's X-24. Shit! And he kills Charles. Yeah. And I remember I... seeing this in theaters. Because at first I didn't quite know what was going on. Because up to that point they hadn't alluded to there being like a Logan clone. No. So I... Because that that thing was just like a simple throwaway line. She was like... Oh, they're, oh, making, they're making a new making, one. Yeah. yeah, but I guess it worked. I don't know. You know. I was shocked. At it was shocking. <laughs> At first, I like with the first time I watched it, I was so confused because I didn't, I didn't know about that either. So I was like, "Why is Logan doing this? Like, what?" Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> it was very effective. Um, this poor family. Yeah. They all get murdered. Yeah. Nate, Catherine, Mister Mudson. <laughs> yeah. Whatever his name is. Oh. Um. And I kind of like that it's like a younger version of him because he's dealing with mortality. So mm-hmm. it's like this idea that he has to like fight basically like the perfect version of what he was created for. Mm-hmm. So to speak, like this like mindless, super powerful mm-hmm. monster. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I do like, it is like, again, a little silly. Yeah. Like, like we created a clone of Logan, you know? <laughs> and, and, and again, I feel like the silliness of the storyline kind of betrays the aesthetic a little bit uh, mm-hmm. and the thematic kind of meat. But um, I do like the thematic implications of of, of the doppelganger. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's kind of cool because, like, that's just, like, what Hugh Jackman looks like. Like, they kind of make him look <laughs> older for regular Logan. Yeah, you know what I mean? I guess so, like, so. It's not like they have yeah. to make Hugh Jackman look younger than he really is. Like... That's more close to like what Hugh Jackman actually looks like. Like dye his hair or something. Oh, probably. And like shave it down to like a buzz cut. Yeah, yeah. Um, And also, there was an interesting detail that um, when when uh, so they they see they have this this like cool VFX shot where I I would imagine it's a VFX shot where the (laughs) doppelganger walks down. It's like both of them in the same frame and they're kind of like circling each other. And Logan's just like like the mind fuck on this. Like what the fuck am I looking at? (laughs) Anyway, the doppelganger walks out. So then Logan uh, is like, has a choice to either like go run to Laura, who's like in the living room, I think, or something, but then like go upstairs uh, to Charles. And he uh, chooses, he kind of like looks back and then he goes to choose, oh, he like yeah, chooses Charles. Because he, he captured her. Yeah. He captures Laura, yeah. And it it's interesting how he chooses Charles. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's probably, like, it's basically a lost cause. Like you can essentially like, like Charles is dead. Like he's still like alive, but like yeah. he's dead. Yeah. Um, because he hasn't like quite built the relationship with Laura yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So then he gets uh, he brings him out, and who shows up but the evil businessman Ugh. thinking it's Logan, and yeah. like we're gonna hire you. Like we think you're pretty cool. Yeah. And then X twenty four decapitates him. Sliced like us. Jeez. Like a piece of a piece of provolone, <laughs> a, a slice of provolone. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. There's a lot of death within about like ten minutes. Yeah. Um. So Charles, dead. Yes. Of it. Caliban, who's been helping them, by the way, track oh, because shit. he's like a, yeah. He tries to distract them by blowing up the truck. Yeah. He's also kind of been distracting them by like. Telling them info like a little too late, like yeah, oh like, they're yeah. here, but like they're long gone by then. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So then Caliban basically kamikazes himself and gets some grenades and blows himself up, and which doesn't kill anyone. I don't know why he does that because no, Pierce doesn't die. No, there or... were two guys in there, but they were just soldier guys. That's yeah. what I mean. Like it was kind of like a pointless death. Yeah. Um. Well, and he, he didn't know. He couldn't see shit. He was locked in a cage. Yeah. <laughs> he was doing what he could with what he had. Yeah. Um. Then Mr. Mudson drives his car into X-24 and, and like, impaled yeah. X-24. Uh, which doesn't kill him, but, but you know, he tries. Well, he shoots him in the head a couple of times. Yeah. And I kind of like how he kind of turns on Logan because it's kind of like, like, you brought this to us. Mm-hmm. And I think that's interesting because Logan, it's really all Charles' fault. Because Logan was didn't want to be there, you know, because he... 
he he knew he knows not to get involved. Yeah. But Charles like almost selfishly like wants that. I think to like, show him that like it's okay to open up. But then it doesn't. It's, it's it, not. It, you know, the, he um, opens up and they die. So I kind of like how Mister Mudson kind of like tries to shoot Logan. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like it, it's it's just like the futility of of you know like this has gone this shit has gone sideways. Yeah. You know. You know what I was thinking about. How it's sad that they all died thinking that that James had turned on them, but it really wasn't James. So I hope they're angels now or something. You know. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, so. like imagine, imagine like having dinner with someone and like being so nice to them, and then they just like slice you. Because you didn't even know you were mutants. Yeah, like. Um. So, uh, they get away, and Logan buries Charles by, by like, a little lake, and he's like, it's, it's near the water, so, you know. Yeah. Because it's so sad, because Charles, last thing he says, is the sun seeker, you know, because he was, like, yeah. that's the last thing he's thinking about, is, like, their plans to run away together, and it makes it sound like, like, a, they're, like, a couple, but, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and this is, like, one of the best scenes, because, like, Logan, like, he's, like, crying, like, he's, like, really trying to hold it together, and, like, yeah. you know. And then he doesn't. He goes all out on a fucking truck. <laughs> yeah. But you know, this is what I'm trying to say, though. It's like, it's like, I almost become numb to it because he's just like, oh, he's like the whole movie. He's just like, you know, um, he's just dealing with yeah. a lot of stuff, man. And, and while I wish they did a little more to develop the emotional relationship between Logan and Laura, I do like their, their chemistry. Mm-hmm. Especially once, because Logan essentially like passes out, and Laura brings him to like a little hospital or like a doctor's yeah. office. Well, she also tries to like hold his hand too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. During the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, um. During like the little funeral, the the yeah. service. Yeah. So she's like open to it, but like she can see that he struggles with that. You know. Yeah. Um. But they have such interesting chemistry. Like I love when like she like starts yelling at him in Spanish. Uh, yeah. And he's just like. <laughs> Um, like, sir, that is your daughter. <laughs> yeah, it's, um... <laughs> I don't know why she would yell at him in Spanish. He doesn't speak Spanish. Or maybe he does, I don't know. Uh, yeah, he, he doesn't speak Spanish. Well, well, does he speak Japanese? Cause he, <laughs> he spent a lot of time in Japan, right? Like, I guess so, yeah. But his mind was erased. He oh, doesn't shit. remember that yeah, shit. that's right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's also interesting, like... Again, like how I wish I like had more of an understanding of this because um, I really like how like they completely dehumanize the mutants. Like you have the scene where like uh, uh, Rice or Price, right? Rice. Rice. Um, he is talking to like the I guess government agent. I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah. And basically, like they're like we're gonna bring people. him back, and then Calvin's just laying there and he's like, "Oh, get samples of him. He's a good tracker." Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's just like his yeah. chart. Like he's just like basically like, you know, just like a sample. Yeah. You know, that's all he is to them. Mm. Um, he was so crispy. Mm. He was very crispy. Um, <laughs> then we start to move into the third act a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the third act kind of loses steam. I feel like the last third of this movie is like probably the weakest part. Like the first is really good setting up the world. The second third is like all like the family stuff, which is like super engaging. Mm-hmm. And then the third is kind of like devol- kind of like it kind of starts to unravel a little bit. It kind of starts yeah. to lose its handle on itself. Well, I guess that's because we learn that he's sick, and so it's like indicative of his state of health. It's like slowing down, you know, like <laughs> what? What? Do you know no, what? I think it's, just, it's not written well. I don't know if it's an <laughs> intentional choice. Well, that's when we learn that he's sick. I mean, he's coughing through the whole fucking movie, and we're like, why is he coughing? And then, you know, we go... He well, if anything, by that logic, then the story should be ramping up to contrast him dying so it, like, creates more obstacle for him. I don't know, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, I don't know. I find, like, the stuff with, like, the kids, like, I'm like, okay, like, whatever. Like, they go to Eden, it's, like... It's like Kid Nation! <laughs> yeah, like, like, why are these kids so mature? <laughs> Who's this Richter fellow? How do they... Yeah, and why is he the only one that he talks to? Like, <laughs> he, like... Scre- He's, like, the leader. He, like, yelled at the, like, fish boy, and then, like... <laughs> He's, like, the leader. I don't know. I guess so. How does he know so much about medicines? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. He's like, I feel like they wrote him as if he was like 18, also, but then he's like 12. But also, why doesn't he use his earthbending powers more? <laughs> why does he save him to the very last? 
That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like the third act is a little hap, haphazard. Um, well, yeah, they're just running through the woods. I know, but they, this isn't a documentary. They wrote it to be that way. I know. They didn't have to write it that way. <laughs> um, but it's kind of funny. Like, we get these, like, little... But I will say, despite losing steam, we do get, like, these more interesting, like... Uh, uh, organic scenes like where we get to kind of explore the characters a little bit more um, it's funny that Logan's always fucking having nightmares it's, it's, it's a Wolverine staple but this one he's a little like ah, 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 ah. yeah this one he's more like animalistic but I was really surprised that his claws didn't come out cause that's that's like a classic thing you know they've done it on like 18 of these movies I know <laughs> they've done I it know. like almost every movie <laughs> um, I just gotta say Hugh Jackman just uh, is just it, he's just giving a great performance. He's just it's just he's just sexy. I don't know what to say. He's, it's more than anything. Don't objectify the man. Uh, well, he's also yes, he's a very esteemed doctor. He is though. This is I think it's a very good performance. You know what I would call him? What? The greatest showman. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think I think he does a really good job, especially these scenes later, like because she finds the the bullet. Yeah. And he just has such a weariness because he's still healing. But I, I think his, like, he's so, like, as the letterbox blurb said, he's very weary. <laughs> um, and not just because he's healing, but just, like, he's just lived so much life. Yeah. And it's been such a painful life. And he's just like, you know, I was I was actually thinking of shooting myself with it, you know? <laughs> he's so blunt. He's like, just, cause he's just Sir, like, are you going to tell your child that? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He just, he just... Uh, I think Hugh Jackman brings... I think Hugh Jackman's always been such a good actor, and I think he's always done a really good job with this character. Yeah. But again, like Patrick Stewart, like he finally has the material, or at least the aesthetic, to really like stretch those muscles. Sure, sure. Um, and in another scene similar to this one, you know, uh, L- Logan clearly... like Logan loves this little girl. Yeah. Despite me not thinking that they develop it well, in any case, we're meant to, that's meant to be like the story beat is that he loves her, but he's just like, okay, like you're with your friends now. That's it. Like we're done. Yeah. And she's like, you know, that's not it. Right. And he's like, I suck at this, but bad things happen to people I care about. And she ha- comes back with that zinger. Then I'll, then I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Where it's like, it's like the classic, like kid, like you don't love me. I wish yeah. I was ever born. I wish I was never created in a lab. And that's a quote from Austin Powers. But <laughs> Seth Green is like, I wish I was never artificially created in a lab. And, and Dr. Evil's like, oh, that hurts. That hurts daddy when you say that, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Or when, or when uh, Lonnie says that she'd rather have a rabbit than, than Lilo. And she's like, they're a lot less stinkier. And go away. <laughs> yeah I think James Mango looked at Lilo and Stitch as a, as a reference <laughs> and a quieter and quieter um so but anyway so he wakes up and they're, they're all gone all the kids are gone they're running through the forest yeah. they're being hunted but they, they didn't they didn't stop to get Logan no. the kids or the bad guys they just, just I, I don't think he expressed any interest in going with them um, or seeing this thing out, so you know uh, yeah, he was like, true. "Well, he's still sleeping." And, but then, why did he change his mind? Uh, I don't know because he loves his daughter. Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, <laughs> so they have this serum that's been healing him, and it's like if you take it in small doses, like it'll just heal you. But if you take too much, like uh, I don't really know. You like it, you go like crazy. It's like, but then he takes it all, but he doesn't go crazy. I don't know. Well, there's still some left in the bottle. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like know. it just like is like a very strong stimulant or like, I don't know. That's a good question. Anywho, um, they start running. They're trying to escape. Uh, we get this really cool like jazzy like Western kind of mm-hmm. soundtrack. Like it sounds like Western, <laughs> like from music from Western, but like jazz at the same time. Yeah. Um. Then uh, Xander Rice appears, and we get this big, stupid, dumb exposition dump. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it feels like it's, like, it, like, doesn't fit with, like, this movie being so serious. It's, like, let me do this big exposition dump of, like, this really silly comic booky idea. Like, we basically sterilized all the mutants through corn syrup. <laughs> like, I don't even understand it. Like, you no, know what I'm saying? is that what he said? Something like that. Yeah. Like, basically, they, like, sterilized all the oh. people so they couldn't have mutants anymore with the corn syrup. Oh, shit. 
You gotta watch out what you eat. Exactly. Shit. Um, and then they just shoot him in the head. So it's just like, <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Also, if if you guys, I think we talked about the Nemo thing, um, in an earlier episode. But just so you know, yeah. just so you know, like shocking things sometimes they make um, laugh. The, yeah they like elicit a a strong reaction and sometimes that's a laugh and um it, sometimes it's not always the best timing for certain things like when nemo's whole like most of his family gets murdered or like you know when the dude's head gets blown up you know it's just like so striking and shocking that i'm just like Pah! so yeah <sighs> whatever you have to tell yourself <laughs> Um, I love how the, uh, and then eventually, yeah, they get Pierce. All the kids gang up on Pierce. It's pretty funny. <laughs> like, this super intimidating guy is being surrounded by all these little chubby kids. <laughs> I like how he gets, like... They're so cute! <laughs> he gets encapsulated in, like, this grass. And his head, like, basically pops. You see, like, the blood, like, seeping oh, on I the ground. I didn't see that, but I, I thought it was funny. There was, like, a little, yeah. like, mummy, like, situation. Yeah. Well, I mean, they don't show his head popping. I'm just saying, like, you eventually see, like, blood. Whereas, like, yeah, yeah. Is, so I imagine, like, they squeezed him so tight, his head popped. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. And sure. I do like, uh, anyway, they start, uh, well, uh, hello. I'm, like, stammering over here. Mm. I'm very hungry, so I'm starting to, like, lose what? focus here. <laughs> uh, Logan fights X24, and obviously he can't beat his younger self because his younger self is awesome. <laughs> and I like how they bring the And anime. also has no conscience. Conscience or conscious? Ness. He has no heart. A conscience is like your your like morals. Yes, he has no conscience. Okay, it sounds like he said conscious. No, his oh. conscience, like he, like he was saying, he's just pure rage. Well, I, he also doesn't really have a consciousness either. Uh, I suppose so. Huh. Do the children? How are the children? Children? Because they were like actual children, whereas he was like just created from scratch, like as like a full grown adult. He wasn't. He was didn't age. He wasn't. Yes. Like, yes. Okay. Anyway. Anyway, I like how the adamantium bullet comes back into it, kind of like Chekhov's gun. Yes. Um, yes. If you yes. know about Chekhov's gun. No. It's like a playwriting. It's like an idea of like basically narrative where it's like if you introduce something, yeah. it should come back into the story somehow. Uh, yeah. So okay. the idea of like you know if you introduce a gun. Yeah. Like the gun should play a role later in the story. That makes sense. Yeah. Um. So I kind of like how the adamantium bullet comes back into it, but instead of him shooting himself, like his like doppelganger gets killed with it. Mm-hmm. I thought it was kind of clever, uh, but yeah, Logan, he's been impaled by a tree. He, <laughs> he's not gonna live. He did. Um, and he starts to die, and Laura's really sad, and yeah. he's like, "Don't be what they made you." Yeah. What you really like is a really good because I think that kind of sums up his not his arc. Like this movie, his arc is about opening up. The arc of this character from all of these movies is about being what they made you versus being your own person. Mm. Like, that's the arc of this character coming, going all the way back from X-Men 1 all the way to now. Right? Yeah. Um, I wanted her. I wanted him to say, I love you. Yeah, that would have been nice. Um, <laughs> but he doesn't. He does not. And he dies, and she's like, Daddy! She's like, Daddy. Um, and Laura, it's kind of funny she does this Shane speech at the end, but... <laughs> uh, Daphne Keene, who's the actress, I think is a is a, I think is a very phenomenal young actress. Yeah, I think she does yeah. a really good job in that last little scene. I think, even though it doesn't, it's kind of silly. I'm like, I really this this delivery of this speech from Shane is is pulling my it's pulling my heartstrings. Mm. You know, and then they 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 leave Wolverine. Yeah, she turns the cross into an X. Yeah, that was silly. And then that's the movie. <laughs> And then a really upbeat Johnny Cash song plays. <laughs> I think they should have played Hurt by Johnny Cash. That I don't know of all the Johnny Cash songs. The why they play that one? That's the position of that. Boy, I tell ya. Boy, I tell ya. Um, so, <laughs> so overall, what did we think? Like, oh, on the on the whole, I think it's a really pretty good, pretty good. I I, I like the movie more for like what it does for the superhero genre. Mm-hmm. Then, like the movie, it's like I, again. I still, re- I really like the movie. This doesn't mean I don't like it, but it's not <laughs> something like I think. I think oftentimes it gets put up there with like The Dark Knight mm-hmm. because they're both very similar in that, like they kind of like, like try to tell like get gritty, try to make it like if this really existed in real life, what would it be like? Yeah. Um, but I feel like that movie is just much tighter on a script level. Like I think it's just, I think it's just a better film overall. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like that this movie. Kind of help is 
gives permission for these films to be a little more interesting like that, right? Yeah. I think that's what, what people want now, you know, like... You'd think. Like, I don't know. Like, there's so many, like, uh, like the Umbrella Academy, uh, the boys. Um, there, oh, there was another one that I saw recently. Oh, I forgot what it was. Um, you know, and, like, Deadpool and, like, I don't know, just, like... They want a little more serious. Grittier, yeah. I like, mean, Zack Snyder's cut of the Justice League was R, I believe. Yeah. R-rated. And then, like, the, the director's cut of Batman v Superman, colon, Dawn of Justice, which we'll watch at some point, <laughs> I believe was also R. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. So, like, there's definitely a what? hunger for this, especially in contrast yeah. to the Disney-fied, um, you know, yeah. like, MCU at this point. Because yeah. 2017, or- this is definitely, like, peak, like... This is peak MCU. Yeah, we don't want the classic superheroes. We don't want, like... Like, a couple months after this, Spider-Man Homecoming came out. Which, like, could not be farther from each other. Yeah. Stylistically. (laughs) Yeah. That's kind of meant to be, like, a John Hughes, like, teen comedy... (laughs) Yeah. ...kind of thing. Um, You know, Guardians of the Galaxy also came out, like, the same year. 2017, a lot of... uh, Thor Ragnarok came out this year. So, like, this movie definitely stands apart in that era. Big year, big year. It was a big year, yeah. Uh, I thought it was really good. Yeah, I yeah. I liked it. Oh, except I don't like the part where he dies because that's sad. Um, yeah, it's pretty sad. But yeah, and also like it would be cute if they like became a little family and lived in Canada and just like <laughs> he is Canadian after all. So you know, I kind of like how it all goes back to Canada. Like he dies like <laughs> right near the border. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, it kind of makes it like very full circle. Yeah, and not just because it, it's full circle both chronologically like within this timeline but also chronologically the movies were released Mm -hmm. because like chronologically obviously he was born there yeah yeah. but also like that's where we're first introduced to him in the movies yes like the first movie we see even though it's not the first chronological (laughs) film so you know what i mean yeah yeah um i think that would be cute but i don't know i mean he's already done that lived with someone in the woods so he's and he's already done a couple times yeah yeah um, R.I.P. Let's uh, let's do some trivia. Nice. Um, again, this is from IMDb. IMDb. No way of verifying this. So for <laughs> all I know, every single piece of information I'm about to say is completely false. Fan fiction. But but it's but I it's interesting. I like I like it. Um. Okay. When Charles Xavier suffers from his seizures, Hugh Jackman did not act as if he was being pushed away. Instead, he was held back by a rope pulled by two men in order to give a more realistic portrayal of being restrained. Hmm. Interesting. interesting. Uh, when Laura and Charles are watching Shane, Charles mentions remember seeing the movie as a child in his hometown. This was entirely improvised by Sir Patrick Stewart because Shane was one of his of the first memories he had at the theater as a child. Mm. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, kind of interesting coinkinink. <laughs> um, while auditioning for the part of Laura, Daphne Keene asked director James Mangold if she could improvise her lines. After Hugh Jackman started his dialogue, Keane interrupted him by yelling at him in perfect Spanish, something that was later included in the finished movie. Uh, her dedication for that scene during the audition was praised by Jackman and Sir Patrick Stewart. Yeah, that was uh, that was a good, that was good. That was a goodie. <laughs> that was a goodie. Um, the samurai sword presented to Logan in the Wolverine can be seen in the smelting mill where Logan and Charles are hiding. I think we noticed that when yes, we were watching we it. we did, we did. Um, Professor Xavier's psionic blasts yeah. uh, was done <laughs> by shooting shaky footage and then re-stabilizing it in post mm. on purpose, yeah. resulting in footage containing strange motion blur with streaming effect, a smearing effect that is both organic and very unusual. Uh, the team shot the sequences slightly wider than was needed so that shots could be blown up to hide the edges of the stabilizing effect. Mm, because when you do that, cool. like, if you did that and, and didn't, like, zoom in, yeah. you it would just see, like, a bunch of black, almost like when you have widescreen, it's like the black bars. You would yeah. see a bunch of black appearing and disappearing all over the sides of the screen. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, basically the, the rectangle is basically shifting all around. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that, though. That's really cool. Because, it's an interesting idea. Because, like, instead of shaking it in post, like... You know, it's, they they, sh- they shook it in real life and then s- digitally stabilized it. Yeah. So it has this weird... Yeah. It looks it, weird. If, if they did the opposite, then it, it would look a lot more like... I don't know. It would look weird. It's just interesting. I, yeah. I like how they do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I kind of noticed, I was like, I feel like the camera quality is a little bit worse. And probably now knowing that they had to use a wide... They probably used like a wider lens that didn't have as good picture quality. Yeah. Because usually you would just use like a prime lens, mm-hmm. which like has really good... Right? So... Anyway, 
Uh, Daphne Keene, uh, who played Laura, yes. was 11 years old at the time of filming and so was not allowed inside the casino, even uh, with all the correct shooting permits. What? Uh, so some shots were done with Keene on a green screen and some scenes were shot in the actual casino with Keene's body double, um, who was over 18, but of a similar build to Keene. That's silly. Aren't people, all people... What what I've been told is that all people are allowed into casinos. It's just you cannot leave that walkway if you are not over eighteen or over twenty one or eighteen. Like if you're to, if I you're don't to know. It may be off, different. It may be different state by state, casino by casino. I don't maybe. know. Maybe yeah. Because like, also she's so young. That's the thing. Is like <laughs> that's true. But like like that was a problem, or not a problem. But that was something that came up. Like. Um, my family likes to like go on vacation to like Las Vegas sometimes. So like, you know, when we stayed at like Excalibur and like, you know, so we were like going to those places that like have the casino or whatever. Um, but we were just told like, just to stay on the walkway and don't like, you know, don't go buy a slot machine or like, yeah. you know, whatever. Or don't like just be walking around because they serve like free drinks and stuff. You know? Yeah, that's that's so. why. That's why even if you're 18, you can't do the slots at a casino yeah. because because of the free drinks. Because of yeah. free drinks, yeah. Yeah. Um, where are we? Okay. According to James Mangold on the audio commentary, the collapsed water tower that Charles stays in at the abandoned Mexican smelting plant was supposed to be a dark reflection of Cerebro. Hmm. That's kind of interesting, right? Yeah. This kind of big... Uh, Interesting. You know, spherical kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, because it's kind of, it's almost like the opposite where Cerebro was meant to him, was meant to help him connect to the world. This is supposed to block him. Yeah. yeah. Or at least it's supposed to. Uh, this one's hilarious. Logan smiles only three times throughout the movie. <laughs> okay. Someone was That's counting? Hilarious. <laughs> I guess so. Well, there's only three times. He's, I, I know one of them is uh, at dinner. Yeah. One of them, I think, is when uh, they flash the titties. <laughs> and then probably a third one somewhere else. Yeah. I don't know where. I don't, know. I don't remember. Um, you're going to love this one. Okay. Sabretooth. Yes. Was originally going to have a small role. What? Where he helps Wolverine, X-23, who's Laura. Yeah. And Professor X when they arrive in Oklahoma. Lee Schreiber was even approached about reprising his role from X-Men Origins Wolverine. There was going to be a scene where Logan encounters a kind of underground railroad for mutants, which might have had a cameo from a well-known character. Both scenes were removed because of the t- because the team behind the movie didn't want to have an abundance of cameos or mutants in the movie. What? Yeah, so Lee Schreiber was this close. Not just Sabretooth, but like that version of Sabretooth. You know what? They did do that on purpose because he looked exactly like him. He had the whole the whole je ne sais quoi of of leave and <laughs> leave <laughs> and shit. You could say that they, they want him in the movie, and then we're like, now we want you to leave, leave. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, they they probably fashioned his his look x twenty x twenty four six four um, <laughs> to look like him because because he's like the evil like mm-hmm. uh, Wolverine e- evil Logan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> Um, Millie Bobby Brown auditioned for the role of X-23. What? Who famously 11. Yes. And, and this would have been, I, I wonder when they, this would have been after Stranger Things. Though I don't know when they filmed this movie, so it could have been. Yeah, well, I mean. It could have been, this movie came out after Stranger Things, but I don't know when they filmed it. So this could have been, yeah. they could have filmed it before she was like super famous for being in Stranger Things. Mm, I don't know. I mean, like, Stranger Things came out when, in we, were, when we were in high school. Oh. When I was, I was in college. So. Oh, when I was in you, high school. You know, I know something that you just, you talk about when things came out based off of what schooling you were in instead of like the year. No one knows when you were in high school and also that's like a four year period. <laughs> I don't know when things happen. Any, so that's how I group them together. Anywho, <laughs> uh, Laura's X-Men comic books were specifically made for the film. They're not real comic, oh, uh, X-Men comics. Interesting. Um, that way it's like, you know, like, it could specifically reference things that this movie references. Like, the Eden. Like, that's not from the comics, I think. Oh, You know what okay. I mean? Um, and they were made to showcase the contrast between the adventurous <laughs> fiction and the real world of mutant persecution. Um, James Mingle got the idea from the movie Unforgiven, where aging cowboy William Money meets biographer W.W. <laughs> w. Beauchamp. Quote, 
When you've got these aging heroes who are Twilight versions of their own legends, that idea of being a kind of celebrity or sports star long past your heyday was really interesting for me to investigate. So it's kind of pulled from that idea of like, they would be mythologized yeah. in real life. You know what I mean? Hmm. Um, the F word is used 35 times. <laughs> um, this is the last movie in which Hugh Jackman will play Wolverine. He has cited his age and, I did not know this, his skin cancer. I, I didn't know he had skin cancer. He it got must skin be cancer. Maybe it's mild and um, I don't know, but he does. He is from Australia. Maybe I don't know. Son. Um, he cited these factors as him retiring from the role. He also said this is this is why I put this trivia bit. Is that <laughs> okay. He also said that having a discussion with Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> okay. played a part in retiring the character, as Jerry talked generally about how he wanted to make sure he never got to a point with Seinfeld where audiences were weary of seeing anymore, saying, quote, oh, it's you again. <laughs> Jackman felt fortunate to have avoided this for Wolverine and wanted to ensure it never happened. So he kind of wanted to kind of quit while he was ahead. Yeah, like quit before it gets bad, you know, like. If you- uh, that's what I don't know if I'm saying yeah, before no. it got bad, because the movie's been bad, which is like people no, stopped liking like- him. Yeah. Because even so. in the bad movies, like people always said like, oh, but at least Hugh Jackman's really good. Yeah. But that That's like a thing, though, is like, it's like quit you know before it gets bad and like you know how are you supposed to top the greatness that you've already achieved you know it's like it's kind of like tom brady like he should have retired a long time ago (laughs) yeah (laughs) he's one of that paycheck he's just milking it like a fucking cow he's retiring now but yeah yeah um in uh uh, I think I already said this, but in the story, in the original story, Old Man Logan, Mysterio tricked Logan into killing the X-Men. In the movie, Charles killed the X-Men by one of his seizures. Yeah. Um, this last one's going to make you cry. Oh, okay. Or at least your goofy cry that you do, Wink, where you're being sad, but you're not actually crying. Uh, okay. Um, in The Wolverine. Yes. Also directed by James Mangold. Logan's travel companion, companion Yukio, predicted that Logan would die with his chest ripped <laughs> open and his heart in his hand. Although this ultimately didn't happen. In the Wolverine, many fans point to the fact that she may have been predicting his death in this movie. Wolverine lying down with his chest ripped open, holding the hand of his daughter, uh, but his flesh and blood, and therefore his symbolic heart. Mangold later confirmed this notion via Twitter. Aww. So in a way, well. she was right. Yukio was right. Aww. Isn't that sad? Uh. So you did, you did, you did the goofy fake like, cry. It's like, oh, when you finally. When you finally meet your dad, and then he dies. Shit. Mm. But she's like, I love my dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what was I gonna say? No. Okay, so yes, let's... I was gonna say something. <laughs> Jesus. I know how you like to say that it's kind of like a one-off and like kind of tries to um, distance itself from the other movies, but I think it does like a, a relatively, you know... Uh, sizable job of a uh, recognizable job of of connecting to the other ones you know it definitely if not the other ones in terms of the plot just <laughs> it very much is aware like you've been watching this character for like 15 plus years yeah played by this guy and this is gonna be his big send off yeah. and he wasn't even naked yeah we didn't get any you naked would at least we had an R-rated movie we kind of we could have finally seen some Wolverine dong <laughs> And and you didn't do it. <laughs> the last what the time, fuck? last time we're ever gonna see Logie as or Hugh as Logie. Well, I don't know when these are gonna come out. We, and... We've been taking a really long time to record these episodes. Um, I think the first one we recorded was Christmas time, twenty twenty one. So it's, and this is currently February twenty. We're taking a really long time because we're busy. <laughs> um, so I don't know when these are gonna come out. I would not be surprised, like the rumors going around now, is that Wolverine is going to be in the new Doctor Strange multiverse movie. Mm. Um, so if you're listening to this and it's that movie's come out, then like you know whether or not that happens. But I, it's going to be kind of weird because like everyone thought like, okay, we'll see Wolverine again, but they're going to reboot it and it's going to be like a new actor. Yeah. A lot, I think I saw a fan casting of, you're going to think this is weird, Daniel Radcliffe. Okay. And the reason why that would actually be kind of good is because as, Logan... As Logan? As Logan, yeah. <laughs> okay. But, but, I mean, think about it. Hugh Jackman up to this point was, like, a girly girl actor. You know what I mean? Like, he wasn't, like, a cool dude before X-Men came out. Like, the I first guess, X-Men. I guess so. Um, like, he was, like... I think he was mostly, like, a, a theater person. And, uh, like... You know what I mean? Um, but... Uh, Daniel Radcliffe could be good because Wolverine's supposed to be, like, short. 
Oh. <laughs> like the short, kind of little grumpy, kind of fiery. Yeah. So I think I, I, was, I heard that. I was like, that could actually be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would not be surprised if they just fold in the, the Fox version of these characters. Either as an appearance or just like... Because what they would sometimes do in the comics yeah. is like... If a popular character gets created in, like, an alternate timeline, they then they'll, like, fold them into the real timeline. So, for example, Miles Morales mm-hmm. um, is introduced in the Ultimate Spider-Man <clears throat> timeline, which is not the same as, like, the mainline Marvel universe. Okay. Um, if, you, uh, if you guys can't see, is like, her eyes, she looks like she's, like, twitching. Like, this is, like, too much to compute. <laughs> I can't. There's different, there's different, like, you know there's different, like, different Spider-Man in the movies? Yeah. There's a different Spider-Man in the comics. There's, like, different versions okay, of the character. Okay, okay, okay. Miles Morales is the continuation of the ultimate Spider-Man version Peter? of... of Yeah. Oh, wait, they're all Peter. Um, Toby? No, this is not movie-related. I'm saying in the comics, oh. there's, there's different versions of Peter Parker. Yes, yes. One of them is in, like, the mainline Marvel timeline. Okay. One of them is in the ultimate Spider-Man timeline. That's, like, a whole brand, ultimate Spider-Man. The ultimate universe was like its whole like alternate reality where they did it like in like the modern day. Okay. Ooh. Miles Morales was introduced in the ultimate timeline. Ooh. But o- Miles Morales became such a popular character. They did like this big crossover event like t- through the timelines and Miles Morales basically got folded into the main timeline. Mm. So basically what I'm saying is I wouldn't be surprised if they do that now. <laughs> Either they do just like a cameo for Doctor Strange or they just like fold in these characters into the MCU. With Hugh? Yeah, with Hugh, Patrick nice, Stewart. Nice, nice, nice. Um, because Patrick Stewart, like, his voice was in the trailer for Doctor Strange, but we didn't, like, see him. But so everyone's mm-hmm. like... I heard, I heard a weird... Now we're really off track, but I heard a theory <laughs> that people think it's not the, the Professor X from these movies, but the Professor X from... Even though it's Patrick Stewart, the Professor X from the animated series... What? Because apparently, I, I never really watched, I've seen like a couple what? episodes, but apparently that series ends with like Professor X like disappearing. Oh. So people are like, like the big thing is like, what happened to Professor X? Oh. And they're actually, they're actually continuing <laughs> that, that animated show on Disney Plus now. Oh. They're going to do like a continuation of the 90s show, like in that style. So he like so they think people swept think that, up in like one of Doctor Strange's circles. Need, I don't know. But, but in any case... People are like they're re- they're continuing that version of those characters. Okay. They already made like the what if show technically canon, so that's an animated show. Okay. So who's to say that like this isn't the version of Professor X that we knew from the anime? Like this is getting very complicated. This. So I would not be surprised if we see these two in these roles again, even though this was like supposed to be their final yes role, a final uh, pass at this. I would just like to say that this is way too much, and back in my day. You, know? you saw Spider-Man, and then you saw Spider-Man 2, and you don't have to go, oh, well, you actually need to see Daredevil, and which, but you can't see Daredevil until you have to watch The Hulk and Fantastic Four. Oh, but really, you have to read this. Back in my day, movies were just movies, but now they're fucking puzzle pieces. If you want to see Spider-Man 3, you got to watch one, too. It's like, it's, like, it's like Kevin Feige has made the ultimate fucking puzzle, and you got to watch 37 different movies to see the whole picture. Well, and then there's different life. timelines because you know we get is. bored with this one, I guess. Well, I don't know. Why not back in our day, comic book movies were not made by comic book people. <sighs> oh now they are, this is exactly what's like in the comics. Well, this is why I don't read comics. I know, but think, but think about this. But like, like sixty years of this. I know it's crazy. It's like it's like if you're reading Lemony Snicket, right? And then all of a sudden, Lemony Snickers, <laughs> Lemony Snicket just goes off on a, on a different timeline, and I'm like, shit. Wait. Anyway. Wh- anyway. What? Anyways, anyway. So anyway, as this was the last time Logan presumably would have been Wolverine, I think we we should have at least seen some buttons or like you know some. Yes. We get to see the well, bloody chest, but it's all bloody yeah. and. You know, it's not mm-hmm. very good, you know, quality. He's not yeah. clean, so you can't really see it. But, you know, yeah. he did all that dehydration work for nothing. Mm-hmm. Kind of hairy chest. Yes, but I'm saying, if well, it, you know, maybe dis- a shower scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, despite the fact there were no buns, let's see what the critics thought, despite that. Uh, okay. So, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 94%, wow. which is the highest Rotten Tomatoes score for any film in the franchise. Um, or ever, in the franchise, oh, in not the- ev- not in every any movie ever made is, ever. Is there one with like one hundred? Yeah, I think like something like uh, I think Toy Story two or something. Toy Story or Paddington, I think or something. Paddington. 
Hamilton. Oh my um, goodness. May I read the critical consensus? Sure. Instead of you screeching. There are no rotten tomatoes here, baby. <laughs> um, the critical consensus uh, is, quote, Hugh Jackman makes the most of his final outing as Wolverine with a gritty, nuanced performance in a violent but surprisingly thoughtful superhero action film that defies genre conventions. That's pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the letterbox score, uh, more contemporary reception, 4.1 out of 5, mm-hmm. which is also the highest letterbox score for um, any film in the franchise. Interesting. Um, so this is by far kind People of considered the most really well liked it. Yeah. People really, it was just weird because I feel like it hasn't had a huge cultural impact the way that something like Deadpool did. Hmm. Um, I don't know why, because I feel like this is infinitely better than Deadpool. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, like like people like, I remember like people were like, oh, this is the best one, blah blah blah. Like this is so good. Like, I remember yeah. even at the time it didn't make a huge spl- splash, probably because it didn't make like a gazillion dollars. Uh-huh. Like it made less than Days of Future Past. It made less than Deadpool. Really? I mean, it made like I said, it made about six hundred fifty ish thousand. Uh, excuse me, million dollars. As opposed to those yeah. movies, which were more like in like the mid seventies, high seven. Uh, excuse me, mid mid to high seven hundred million. Well, maybe maybe like the appeal in the trailer was not like kind of turned some people off, but then they finally saw it, and then they were like, "Oh, this is something we really wanted, but we didn't know." I think it's one of those things that it's like the people who saw it and like it really like it. Yeah, but yeah. it doesn't necessarily have a huge cultural impact. Yeah. Um. And I think that's like the sacrifice you have to make when you make a film more thought. Like it's not gonna be like Infinity War. Yeah. That like blows everyone's minds and like you know is a huge cultural moment. Yeah, know? because that's more like trendy. Whereas this like will be, you know, this. Like is, this was adapt. This, this was is, nominated for best adapted screenplay. Yeah, th- th- this you know is I mean? like trying to. It's kind of like uh, in music, you know, like some some things are like you know trending or whatever, but like. In 20 years, no one's going to know those songs, you know? Like, they're not, like, big songs like, No one's going to probably they, listen to Dua Lipa they, in, they, like, 20 years. <laughs> like they I mean? just, no offense. I don't want to offend anyone. But like, like, they just, like, were kind of trendy for that one thing. And if they do, then, you know, that's all they'll be known for. Like, <laughs> sad, sad take. But, like, Eddie Money, you know, like, Take Me Home Tonight. Like, uh, people don't really talk about, like, other Eddie Money songs, you know? And, like... Mm-hmm. So I just say something like this will kind of stand the test of time, and maybe we'll be like more reevaluated in the future. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is more. Um, this is more. Uh, what is it called? What is that called? Uh, like uh, the one that everyone sings, Journey. Don't stop believing. Yes, this is this is more like don't stop believing or living on a prayer. I feel like this is more like a, a singer songwriter song, not like yeah, or like, like not like glam rock. <laughs> no, no, no. I just mean like the longevity of it. The longevity of it. <laughs> um, favorite part of the movie. Mm-hmm. Favorite part. <laughs> There's a lot to... I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Professor X, definitely. Yeah? Because he's funny. I was kind of leaning towards that. Of, yeah. Well, but I don't know. Let me... Mm, but why, why Professor X? Um, Because he's funny and he's cute and he's sweet and... Yeah. I think I'm going to go with the, the whole... Ugh. The family scene. I feel like every time I do my favorite part, it's always like, I love this this scene because it's so real. Well, yeah, I feel like you, every time I say that. Yeah, you said that about the other movie, too, with the, the older couple. Yeah, because I just love to see. I think I said the exact same thing about them where it's like, see, it's yeah. like they're the only people doing the right thing and they yeah. get punished. You love to see farmers. Yeah, I'm going to go with them. Yeah. That um, was pretty good, too, but you know what? You know, I'm gonna, sad. I'm going to make it very specific. I like that Mr. Mudson... Will. Will. I look Thank you. Will uh, tried to then kill Logan. Hmm. The reason why is because I think that kind of captures this movie where it's like, you know, it's not like this heroic death. Like, and he's like, oh, it's it's okay. Like, like it, there's like an anger directed towards Logan because it's like, you brought this upon us. Yes. You know what I mean? And I just thought it's like, said, it's like yeah. very morally complicated. Mm-hmm. And I think it kind of captures the film really well. And mm-hmm. I know it's not the most obvious, like, Best part of the movie, nah. <laughs> but um, yeah. okay. So let's look at our ranking now. So out of one to ten, what would you give this movie? 
And then based off that score, then we can try to slot it in. Um, I don't know. I get maybe like um, uh, maybe like a seven or eight. Like, well, what's it gonna be? Ah, seven point um, fives are not allowed. They're illegal. <laughs> okay, let's do an eight. An eight. Eight's see, great. Yeah, I see. I have other eights too. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's a lot. Yeah, I, I didn't say you didn't have other eights. I'm, I, I'm asking why you're choosing eight. I think people want to hear why you're giving it the score you're giving, not just I give it an eight. Don't ask me why. I refuse um, to elaborate. <laughs> I think it's a very good film. It is. It is. A, it, you know, it has everything. I would say it has has the funnies. It has the action. It has the heart. Um, you know, it, it builds upon the lore. You know, I'm you know I'm a little slut for the lore. Um, you're, you're a lore slut. Yeah, like especially with Lord of the Rings and stuff. But you know, um, sometimes I have trouble keeping up with the lore, but I enjoy. Yeah, every it. time we talk about, mo- you're like, wait, which one was that? Yeah, but I I like it. You know, um, okay. and yeah, I don't know, and and just seeing Logan basically like in anything. <laughs> He's just, I just feel like he's just like a good character because he's like so complicated and like, he's like trying to do the right thing, but also like keeps getting hurt when he does the right thing. So he just wants to distance himself or not do the right thing. And like, you know, he has a lot of uh, push and pull on his own, on his own, you know, moral Mm -hmm. uh, complex. Brilliant! <laughs> See, this is what the people want. They want to hear your analysis, your anal cyst. <laughs> well, my scientific analysis. Mm, okay, so you've given three other films an eight: X Two, X Men: Days of Future Past, and The Wolverine. Would you say you like Logan more or X Two? And X Two is the one with the lake, with. Mm. Um, the the Japanese lady with the nails, yes, striker. Yes. Which which do you like more, Logan or X two? Uh, Logan. Okay. Do you like Logan or Days of Future Past more? Uh, mm, See. Uh, uh, Logan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so then sure, here sure. we go. Here's here's gonna be the the kicker. This or the Wolverine? No, no, no. The Wolverine's still better. <laughs> All right, you heard it here first, folks. I mean, it's good, but I, I was just, I was bedazzled by the Wolverine. <laughs> I, I, I think you're the only person to ever <laughs> put the Wolverine on the top of any. Ex- I think it's pretty good. I think it's, I think it's underrated. But <laughs> if there is a James Mangold fan club, I would like to join because. <laughs> well, what did you think of Ford v Ferrari? Because he also directed that. I thought that was good too. You're a little James Mangold. I am a little James Mangold. Slut. James, if you're if you're listening to this, you got you got a groupie. <laughs> I didn't even know it, but yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> so that's my turn. I think I'm gonna give this movie. I'm gonna do what I do every time. I, I start the movie. I go. This is much better than I remember it being. And then I, <laughs> it, I'm giving it a seven. It's a really really good movie. What Viviana just almost started laughing. What What's you know? About? What else James Mangold directed? What. Or no, he was a writer on what? Oliver and Company. Are you sure? Yes, really? That says it on his Wikipedia. Good for him. Um, That's a good one. Um, can we get back to Watch what I was talking out. about? Oh yeah, what's your rating? I'm gonna give it a seven. Okay. I think it's really, really, really? good. But again, I think there's just too much to hold. It. Like I again. Sometimes I, I feel like I'm like, oh, I feel like I should give it an A, you know, not just with this movie, but other movies where I'm debating like what score to give it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I feel like if I have to convince myself to give it a score, it doesn't deserve it. If I have to try to mm-hmm. like convince myself, oh, but it's really an eight because of this, that I'm like, I, I know it when I see it, mm-hmm. you okay. know? Okay. So I'm giving it a seven. And I think I'm gonna put it above the original X-Men. You as really, you did. You really like that one, though. The original X-Men? Yeah, but I'm putting it above it. But I'm, I think, uh, I think I'm going to put it alo- below Days of Future Past. Mm. And the reason why Interesting. is because Days of Future Past, uh, again, this is purely subjective. It just feels more fan servicey. I don't know. It just delights me more. I don't know. I would just <laughs> rather watch it than, than Logan. Uh, like, Logan's probably a better film. Yeah. But, but 
like Days of Future Past. I, I, I could wake up tomorrow and be like, I regret that guy. I want to change it. <laughs> but but I don't know. Like they kind of feel like they're both equal quality, but for different reasons. Yeah. Okay. Like like low like X Men Days of Future Past is like is great I, if for what it's trying to do. Both good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put Logan below Days of Future Past and give it a 7. But you know why I put it above was because yeah. it's not as superhero-y. Yeah, this is definitely, again, more of a film. You know, it's, yeah. It's, I don't know if you noticed this, but it's kind of more like a Western. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah. I'm smart because I noticed it. Uh, and, and you did and you, 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 you didn't, right? There was know. dirt. I know it was a Western. <laughs> no, I'm just being a douchey film, bro. That's what they say. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I think that's why... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Something about a scruffy Logan. It just it just gets me, man. Because like Wolverine, incredible. Uh, Logan, incredible. You know, it's just those are my. I don't know. Those are, those are the ones that I would want to yeah. watch on repeat. Logan and the Wolverine. I mean, like the other ones are good too, and I'd, I'd gladly watch the other ones. But like, if we're like, oh. Which one are we going to watch? Yeah. You know? And this is surprising because it's always been the one with the bridge. As we know. It's always been the one with the bridge, yes. Even though you did not give it an eight. Yeah. Well, now I'm a... Now, now you're I'm a film a, Now I'm a grown-up, so yeah. Okay. Um, well, this might be our longest episode. It's oh. like 2.16. Oh, man. So well, far, we also but... did have a lot of tech issues. <laughs> We did have a lot of tech issues. If you hear any, if you hear anything weird on this, uh, it's because like my mic kept disconnecting. It, it was not um, subpar editing. It was technical difficulties. Yeah, <laughs> but my throat hurts. I'm starving, so I'm calling it. That's it for this week's episode. <laughs> oh, now that's what I call a franchise. Next week we'll be watching the next film in the franchise, the 2018 film. Deadpool 2. Viviana, where can they find us? You guys can find us wherever you get your podcasts, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Franchise Podcast. We know you have many podcasting options, and we thank you for choosing us. Peace out, guys. Later, Gators.